Yes. 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 What is going on, Knox Nation? What is going on, YouTube? Happy Saturday. Happy weekend. That's right. Today is one of the greatest of all days. Because those of you who were here for the last live of this, you know what the energy was like. You know how much I appreciated the musicality, the artistry, the lyricism, the storytelling that is none other than Hamilton. And you also know that we fought the old copyright battle. Yes, yes we did. So there are a lot of questions. There are a lot of question marks in the air. Are we going to finish this? How is Knox going to do this? Well, I guess I'm a glutton for punishment because we're going to try to do this again live. We're going to see if we can get through this live. Now, one thing I learned from the last time. Let's make a quick announcement to those of you in chat, to mods as well. If the stream does kick out because it gets automatically flagged in the YouTube system, don't go anywhere. Just hang tight because I think it's what? It's 60 seconds and it'll kick back in and then we can continue. And honestly, when it did happen, I mean, we got through like three hours of the reaction before it finally started kicking in. And what I noticed was that the longer that I let the songs play, the more chance it was to get flagged. But you guys know this is a breakdown channel. The good news is that pausing is going to help us today because we pause a lot. And honestly, when I was getting near hour three, I was getting tired and I was anxious to try to get to the halfway point. So I was kind of letting things play longer and not talking as much, which, you know, is, is understandable. But that explains why for the first three hours, we didn't have any issues. And then towards the end, we started to encounter some issues. So I think we have learned. I think we have learned. Matt Massengale says, pauses? What are those? Matt, I don't know what pauses are either. But we do it a lot, apparently, on this channel. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am a rapper, as you know. Shout out to my new album, Blacklist, has charted on iTunes. We have millions of streams on Spotify as well. There might be some other people who try to claim this uh, Rapper Reacts title that aren't actually rappers, unfortunately. It happens. We deal with it sometimes. But you know what you get on here. You get the breakdowns. You get the analysis. We talk about flows. We talk about rhyme patterns. We talk about anything and everything relating to the music. And we are back with this one. Shout out to Cody Hurst, man. Finally here on time for the live. Glad to see you keep working, brother. Don't forget about covering the Jordan Lucas and Tory Lanez beef. Oh, you know that'll happen. You know that'll happen. Definitely on the list, brother. Thank you so much for the super chat. Shout out to Mike Sebastian. Excited for this. Couldn't catch it last stream due to time zone differences, but we'll see how long I can stay this time. Pam for life. Thank you for the direct donation. Listen, guys, I've said this before. These live streams are great. As you know, the majority of stuff that I react to on this channel, especially Hamilton, I cannot monetize. We cannot make money on this. So people look at the numbers and they're like, wow, Knox should be doing really well. No, Knox still works a full-time job. Knox still juggles as many plates as he can. Knox still tries to take care of his family. So a great way to support the channel and the time spent on the content is donating on these live streams. So if you guys want to donate, I shout out all the super chats. Also, there is a link pinned to the very top of this channel where you can donate directly because all hail our YouTube overlords, but they do take 30% from the super chats. But I will shout it out either way. As you guys know, and it is much appreciated. Now listen, I say this many times in the past. Please only donate what you can afford to donate. Okay? I don't want anybody going out of their pockets for me if they don't have that. Right? Just you being here means a lot. Just you commenting. Just you going and liking this video and helping to boost it in the algorithm. That's, that's a plenty of support from me. You know how much I appreciate you guys. Yeah, boy, 504. Appreciate you and the work you put in, bro. Enjoy the life-changing experience of Hamilton. Oh, I'm excited. Ariana, can't wait for the reactions today. Glad to be here. As always, Ariana, it's so good to see you. Hey, Francis Lau, come... <laughs> Francis, Francis, we haven't even started, man. Francis is already coming through with a $100 donation. Let me get some fire emoji in chat for Francis. Hope you've been doing well knock shout out to your recent music video i need help too great song and video also hope you're ready for tomorrow's halftime show at the super bowl i am so ready 
I've been wanting to react to it live, actually, but I don't know. I think we're going to wait, see what happens, see if we can react to it and how that goes with those things. But thank you, as always, Francis. Love you, bro. Big Patreon supporter of mine. Big Patreon supporter for a long time. Really appreciate you, Francis. Answer S. Love the vibe last time. Let's go. My shift is starting. Hope to watch as much as I can. Hey, multitasking for the win. Hope your shift goes by quickly. And what better way to do it than to spend it with a little bit of Knox trying to break his brain on Hamilton. Boss Lady D, much love from your favorite mod boss. Boss Lady D, you don't have to donate, but thank you so much for the donation. Just your time being mod and helping with all that and helping with the heathens in chat. You know it means a lot. You know you're always appreciated. Thank you. Grim R, can't wait, Knox. Let's go, Grim. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Grim. Ronald McKelly. Hey, hey Ro I need more fire emoji. Wow, we're going off today. Thank you so much, Ronald McKelly. It really does mean a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope I do the rest of this justice. Listen, can we do me a favor? Uh, I couldn't remember where we ended because we kind of had cutouts. I know we did the 10 dual commandments because we were talking about that and the comparisons to Biggie and the 10 crack commandments and the homage that Lin-Manuel Miranda was paying to Biggie and all that and the duel that Hamilton was a part of between Lorenz and the general who was slating Washington. I know we were there. It's telling me here that we did meet me inside and that would be enough. But I, I, I can't remember if I just clicked it and tried it and we did it live or if we did it or not. So can somebody remind me where we left off on our wonderful journey? The Pan Paladin. Thank you for the super chat. Praying we don't have a repeat of what happened last time. Let's all say prayers. If not, we will have to sacrifice ghosts to the YouTube gods to make sure that this is a clean and successful live stream just kidding i love you ghost didn't pay his rent this month so i kind of got it out for him ariana that would be enough we were halfway through all oh, right okay well that makes sense then that's where we are because i was trying to make it to guns and ships we were excited about guns and ships weren't we but we're definitely gonna hit we're definitely gonna hit uh guns and ships let's go all right listen as you guys know Oh, Max Kane. I came for Harry Max State and got lucky. See you reacting to Hamilton. Love from Germany. Love to you in Germany, man. Thank you so much for the super chat. Kiara, found you through Encanto videos. Fell in love with your work. So excited to finish this with you and excited to see what's next. Me too. Me too. I'm excited to finish this one. Thank you so much for the super chat. Hibiki, hey, my first time catching you live is an aspiring musician. I really appreciate how you break things down. It helps a ton. Keep it up, my dude. Hey, that's one of the reasons why I do this. Hopefully, I help you guys just appreciate and think about music a little bit differently. You know, that's always what I try to do with these analysis. That's always what I say. If I can just inspire one of you and help one of you just appreciate it that much more, and I've done my job on this channel. Jason Clark, wow. More fire emoji in chat, please, for Jason. You guys are all stars today. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this reaction now because I'm really getting overwhelmed by this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. I've been looking forward to this ever since you did the first part. Can't wait till you get to the cabinet meetings. I'm looking forward to it all, Jason. I'm going to sit here and enjoy watching this while I'm chilling in the park playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> Got to catch them all, baby. Hey, hey, Jason. Come on. I know you'll like this shirt, Jason. Bars. Got to catch them all. If you guys want one, KnoxvilleMusic.com. Let's go. Thank you so much for the fire emoji. Now, listen. You know that we always start off the reactions with music. One of the experiences of being live is that you get live music as well. So before we jump into this reaction, you guys are going to get a live freestyle. So, you ready for this? Let's start commenting some words. Let me shout out these two don donos real quick, and then we're going to jump in the freestyle. Start thinking about some words that you guys can comment. And I'm going to freestyle to whatever the chat posts live. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to see how much I mess up. Alex Garcia, can't wait for part two. It'll be much better from inside my house rather than shoveling like Alex. That's right. Hope you got all that snow shoveled. Thank you so much, Alex, for being here again. Hey, I'm a 36-year-old man from NY. Just want to say that you're pretty cute, smart, and talented. I'm newly subbed. Keep up the good work. Hey, I appreciate it. You can thank my parents for good genetics. I really do appreciate the love and the support. Thank you so much for the donation. I hope you have a great weekend up in NY. We're always going to show you love and support. Ariana. Ariana's always a superstar. Another big-time Patreon supporter of mine. All right, people. Oh, I can't see the wavelengths again. I don't know when the rises and falls in this are going to be. That's always annoying. 
It's the one thing that can help me just cue in when I'm trying to freestyle. Oh well, let's go in blind. Quick sip of water, start commenting words. The other thing I want you guys to appreciate is that I don't even know what these beats are before I do them. Like, I don't even get to pre-listen to them. So it just, I guess, adds to the freestyle live. All right, let's go. Okay. Uh, trying to catch the B. Yeah. Trying to catch the B. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Here we go. Rhyming till there's no tomorrow. Rhyming till I'm empty in that water bottle, feeling hollow. But here we go, I'm back and forth inside that flow, and I'ma drop it down on the stereo. I give you the scenario, and yes, I'm trying to find that pocket, just rock it. Taking off like a rocket, I need to stop it. A lot of flows are plastic and artificial, but I ain't drastic, I'm so official. Got them blowing on a whistle. A lot of these rappers suck like leeches. I'm rhyming till I'm chilling on the beaches, but I stay away from all my peers. I'm spitting through the mirror over everything I fear, trying to see the picture clear. Back and forth till I'm feeling hoarse. Take my horse and I'm riding through the walls like it's a Trojan War. Shout to Brad Pitt when I leave them all in pits. Snakes in the grass, spitting toxic, trying to stop it. I spit obnoxious. This is that Nox hit. That flow that I'm giving you. Shout to Pokemon Go. Trying to catch them all before I fall And I fall into these bars And I loop around Mars I'm an alien mind Alien with all these designs I'm pointing like a pyramid I'm like a star cause I shine And I got this shit that y'all need I do this cause I need it man Every time I breathe I exude that hip hop And I exhale Feeling kinda crazy Feeling like that white boy Slim Shady Your chance is looking slim I know that I am shady But understand I'm shining till I'm sunning on all of y'all. Ain't no way you fall trying to ball in my court. Every single sentence I dispense. Stop with the nonsense. I got that hot shit. I spit so good with that moxie. A lot of rappers sitting next to me like a proxy. But they can never keep up. I spit so sick like I'm throwing it up. Put your hands up. This a motherfucking stick up. Got bars like a prison. December 25th, I am so gifted with the rap, I am different. They want to be friends with me, but y'all are my enemies. Expand on this insanity. I do this for my family. I do it for the man in me. Until my roots dig deep in the ground underneath. Shackles out to black thought. These black thoughts that I have dark in my mind when I'm spilling out these rhymes every time. All these divine signs. I age well, like good wine. I'm a Viking on my Nordic shit from the north. Rhyming back and forth, don't make me pull out that pole and spit it with the flow like go, go, gadget. Here we go on a roll yet again. Yeah, I spit that sweet shit. Diabetes, ain't nobody keep up with me. There's no reason. I got that flow, that old bay season, and I'm back up in the oven yet again. Flow super bad, last name, make love and some of my friends. I'm that gas man, got the lighter and the fluid. Here we go, I put that soul right into the movement. I just do it. I keep on pushing hotter than a potato. I'm shining, motherfucker. I ain't vegan like tomatoes. I'm bringing that beef to the streets every time that I speak. Pigs looking at me, but I ain't cooking with that bacon. I'm kind of like my friends who are dudes. I don't touch that shit like spinning. Who are you? So sick, hot chew. When I'm back up in the booth, got that S on my chest and I spit because I'm the truth. I spit because I'm rapping that proof. Flow buzzing like I'm a hundred drinking moonshine. Mountain Dew, motherfucker, I know I am rude. Couple more drinks, spit that moment of clarity. Every time I do it, so insane off the top of the brain. Who is staring at me? I stare at the terror in me. Only opponent that I fear is the one looking at me in the mirror. Here I am, here I stand. Always on my own too. Ten toes down in the ground, never stopping, never giving up. This for anyone who rising with their hands up with the dream. Shackles out to Martin Luther King. I'm a king playing chess. Shackles out to my queen at home watching my two baby girls. Who are my entire world? I still do this for them. Thanks to everybody coming through with the donation. Shackles out to all of y'all, Knox Nation. Flow's taking off like it's got wings. 
I'm swinging like it's UFC, serve them fresh in the box like it's KFC. And I don't see no arch enemies. Only person that I see is me. This is rare air up in the stratosphere. I'm so high, I ain't coming down till next year. Let's go. Let's go. Somebody just, I think, posted some Greek words. I didn't understand that one. Got most of your words, though. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That is the intro to Hamilton. Took me a little bit to get into it, but I feel like once we really got into it, we fell into that mix. Had to feel it out at the beginning, you know? Yeah, there we go, though. Knox, always love your freestyles. Keep grinding. Thank you so much, Answer S. Appreciate you. Thanks for the super chat. That was fun. Should I say what I say every time that I really don't practice these? The only time I ever practice is when we do it live. I really should. Well, if we do get to go full time, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal. If we get to the point where I stop and go full time, I will set aside some time each week to practice freestyling so that we can up the freestyle game even more levels instead of just doing it once in a while whenever we do a live stream. Ariana Knox, you're too damn good. We bowed down to you. That was amazing. Loved it as always. Hey, thank you so much, Ariana. Much love. Hey, Image and Flat coming through. More Patreon supporters. Patreon is crazy today going off. Always a good time on a Knox Live. You know it. You know it. Hey, Kiara, your historic knowledge and love for history in general made the first stream so incredible. Love having the extra tidbits and seeing someone so invested. Hey, thank you so much. Spicy Ninja, Ghost needs his muff with most of these coming songs. I love you and your breakdowns. Happy to see you live for the first time. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you know I'm excited. You know I'm excited. I think, did everybody get a shout out? Hopefully I caught everyone on the donos. I hope I did. I hope I didn't miss anyone. I think we're good. Yeah. All right, we did. All right, guys, who's ready today? Who's excited? Hey, shout out to Bride B coming through with the 499 Dono. Hey, thank you so much. I love you guys. Is there a lot of shocking stuff on this one? Oh, dear. All right, so apparently we were working through that would be enough when we stop. So that's what we're going to pick up. Remember, one quick reminder, guys, if the stream does kick out because it gets copyrighted for whatever reason, stick around. Don't go anywhere because there's a good chance it'll come back within 60 seconds and we'll be able to keep going from there. We'll operate on the three strike rule again, three strikes and I'm out. So we got two to get through. All right, here we go, people. And yes, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that this gets uploaded afterwards. All right. Coming through in three, two, one. How lucky we are to be alive right now Look around, look around How long have you known? A month or so Did we get to this one? I don't remember this one at all What a duet to start with though And again, it's the orchestral sounds That just can create so much emotion Just the strings that set the tone At the beginning of all this And then just that, that beautiful haunting voice and just some of those notes the way that they're held the, the strain in the voice and the vulnerability Liza, you should have told me i wrote to the general a month ago no. i begged him to send you home you should have told me i'm not sorry i knew you'd fight until the war was won but you deserve a chance to meet your son look around look around at how Oh, big reveal. Reveal about the sun. We had, remember when we talked about, I remember this now, when Washington was in an argument with Hamilton and called him son. And the theme was son. Hamilton's son, Washington calling Hamilton son. And now we're playing off the reveal here of Hamilton's son with Eliza. We are to be alive right now. Will you relish being a poor man's wife, unable to provide for your life? I relish being your wife. Look around. Wow, nice piano. Look, around, look at where you are. Look at where you started. 
fact that you're alive is a miracle Just stay alive, that would be enough Hey, I mean, listen, there's just some greater truths being taught And even though, historically, this has taken place a few hundred years ago there's themes to this that still are relevant today and lessons that we can still learn today. And how many times do I say this with my sign off? You know, think about it. We all sometimes get caught up in life and it's easy to take things for granted, to get caught up in that chase for whether it's chasing our dreams or fame or money or that job. And, you know, ultimately those things come and go. You know, the things that are most important, your health, your happiness, your family. You know, those priceless things. And this is one of those songs right here where, where Alex is so caught up in that chase for fame, in that chase for renown, in that chase for leaving his mark, as we've seen. You know, I'm not going to throw away my shot. And this is him not throwing away his shot. And he's kind of losing the forest for the trees, in a sense. And this is that grounding moment in that grounding song I feel like is needed especially at this point in the plot development. Anna Boleyn Villafuerte, thank you for continuing. Hamilton, love from Peru. Love your music. Hey, thank you so much for the Super Chat donation. If this child shares a fraction of your smile or a fragment of your mind to look outward, that would be enough. I don't pretend to know challenges you're facing the world you keep erasing and creating in your mind but i'm not afraid I that's it and you know the the plight of many people is the world that we create in our minds you know there's what happens in the external world and then there's how we perceive it and how we process that within our minds and, and hamilton was definitely someone who lived up here Oh, I married So long as you come home At the end of the day That would be enough We don't need a legacy We don't need money If I could grant you peace of mind If you could let me inside your heart Oh, let me be a part of the narrative I mean, that's the irony, isn't it? We don't need a legacy, but also she's pregnant. He's, he's kind of got a legacy right there, doesn't he? In the story they will write someday Let this moment be the first chapter Where you decide to stay Ooh. And I could be enough and That's the word that I wanted. I was trying to figure out how to, how to describe her voice. She has a pure voice. You know, there's, there's no impurities to it. It's very unfiltered. It's, it's beautiful in how it sits. Could be enough. That would be enough. Beautiful piano. Whoa. All right, here it is. This is what we were trying to get to before. Guns and ships. I feel like that was an important sort of, you know, a, a play, like a plot, like a song. There's waves to it, isn't there? And that was a good down point. That was a good reflection point, wasn't it? Sort of a mood setter as we carry on the journey and continue. Guns and ships is on deck. How does a ragtag volunteer army in need of a shower somehow defeat a global superpower? How do we emerge victorious from the quagmire? Leave the battlefield waving Betsy Ross's flag higher? Whoa. How do we emerge from the quagmire? Raising Betsy Ross's flag higher? Nice complex rhyme scheme right there. And then the quagmire. You know, that could be taken on multiple levels, couldn't it? You know, the, the quagmire that you're stuck in, the situation that you're in at this moment in time. But also, you know, there was a lot of fighting at that time. I mean, Yorktown essentially was a swamp. So literal quagmires that they're fighting in, how do they rise up? You know, being on the battlefield itself and dealing with that. And then Betsy Ross's flag, Betsy Ross, knitted the first American flag as we know it. And uh, the, as the story goes, Washington told Betsy Ross... 
you know, his idea and his concept and kind of pitched it to her. And she made the flag. But the one thing that was different was that Washington wanted to point wanted to point. He wanted to point out six points on the stars. Right? He wanted six points. And Betsy said, no, a five point star is going to be better and more visually pleasing. And ultimately, that's kind of how we associate when we draw the outline of a star nowadays. If you think about it, you could really draw as many points on the star as you want, can't you? Because, you know, stars shine in infinite directions. You know, they're massive celestial bodies of light. But we all equate ourselves, and if you think about it, if you think about the symbol, if someone asks you to draw a star, you're always going to draw a five-point star. And if you think culturally of where that's come from, especially for us Americans, it's been ingrained in our heads with the stars on our flag. So a simple decision like this for Betsy to put and sew in a five-pointed star instead of a six-pointed star has forever affected the way that we ourselves draw stars. Global superpower. How do we emerge victorious from the quagmire? Leave the battlefield waving Betsy Ross's flag higher. Yo, turns out we have a secret weapon, an immigrant. You know and love who's unafraid to step in. He's constantly confusing, confounding the British henchmen. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting French man! I'm taking this horse by the reins, making red coats, weather with blood stains. Ooh, we got Lafayette coming in with the sick raps. Listen, man, a little bit more historical background. I think we talked about how Washington was not the best of generals. The best thing Washington was at was at retreating. You want to know who was a really good military mind whose tactics have been studied and appreciated? Look no further. Marquise de Lafayette, man. Lafayette was a boss on the battlefield. This man balled out and created all kinds of problems for the British. And ultimately, it was Lafayette's efforts that led to the surrender that we know at Yorktown because he and his men were the ones hounding the British and funneling Cor Cornwallis into the trap that was set for them between the French naval forces and the American land forces and ultimately the surrender of Cornwallis at Yorktown. Fighting French men! I'm taking this horse by the reins, making red coats, weather with blood stains. Lafayette. Making red coats red with blood stains. Oh, I love that play on the red coats because the British wore red coats, but also, literally, it's wartime, it's conflict. People are dying, they're gonna have red coats. French men! I'm taking this horse by the reins, making red coats, weather with blood stains. Lafayette. And also, playing on taking this horse by the reins, like literally leading the battle horse, but also, you know, the saying in the popular phrase, you know, taking the horse by the reins. I'm taking control of this situation. Nice wordplay already. I'm taking this horse by the reins, making red coats, weather with blood stains. Till I'm never gonna stop until I make a drop, I burn them up and scatter the remains down. Oh, never gonna stop until I make a drop, gonna scatter the remains. I love how he gets into that faster flow and delivery. And the thing that gets me too is that he's not only rapping this fast, but he's trying to do it with like a French accentuated accent on top of the English. Watch me engaging them, enraging them, escaping them. Love that internal condensed rhyme scheme. Oh, we in the wheelhouse now of the rap breakdown. Watch me engaging them, escaping them, enraging them out. I got the friends for more fun. I come back with more guns. Oh, God, I love how the drums help him just hit that percussion. I come back more funds. Hear how that percussion just hits back more funds. Love how that just syncs together. And obviously him being a Frenchman, appealing to the French for resources. You know, listen, you guys can say what you want about the French, but thanks to the French, we are a nation. Till I make a drop, I burn them up and scatter the remains down. Watch me engaging them, escaping them, and raising them out. I go to France for more fun. I come back with more guns and ships, and so their balance shifts. We rendezvous with we ships, and so the balance shifts. I love just that flow change. So he goes through with the faster flow, da, 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 like super spitter delivery, and then right there, we just slow down the flow for a second and let it breathe. Very cool. More guns and ships. I mean, look at these people talking. Look at you foolish people. I saw before I started letting this play, someone was like, he needs to pull up the lyrics. Ah, uh, hello. I am a rapper. I can rap fast. We react to Eminem all the time. We react to Tech 9 You don't think these ears are tuned in to do the job that I have been doing for years on this channel? Come on, people. You got to give me more credit than that. And I'm out. I got the friends for more fun. I come back with more guns and ships. And so their balance shifts. 
We rendezvous with Rochambeau, consolidate their gifts. We can end this war in Yorktown. Cut them off at rendezvous with Rochambeau. I love how he just made rendezvous, Rochambeau. Again, very nice rhyme writing in internal condensed schemes from Lynn Manuel. And uh, Rochambeau, again, rendezvousing because Washington finally decided. Oh, here's more tactical stuff for us in history, right? Washington wanted to take the forces and wanted to go back and retake New York. And that's where he wanted to go. And it took the French and Rochambeau and Lafayette as well to convince him to stay down south and to trap Cornwallis down south and to keep his forces there and to unite and fight a two-pronged war with French naval support and with the naval ships and to blockade the British and to really just cut off Cornwallis' army and force a surrender, which ultimately we know is the right decision because it won the War of Independence. Four guns and ships, and so their balance shifts. We rendezvous with Rochambeau, consolidate their gifts. We can end this war in Yorktown, cut them off at sea, but for this to succeed, there is someone else we need. I know. So he knows what to do in the trench, ingenuity, and fluent in French, I mean. Hamilton. Oh, that's right. Hamilton did know his French, where he was from the Caribbean. Um, was It was a Dutch colony at the time, wasn't it? God, I can't remember exactly, but... It was French before that, and Hamilton was fluent in French. We'll tie it in with the Lafayette there, and we need Hamilton. I love how there's just that choir chanting effect for Hamilton. Fast and fast and fast. Hamilton, fast and fast and fast. Again, very cool dynamics on this one. Town, cut them off at sea, but for this to succeed, there is someone else we need. I know. Hamilton. So he knows what to do in the trench, ingenuity, and fluent in French. I mean. He knows what to do in the trench. You know when you're going through the trenches of life, the battlefields of life, but also he knows what to do literally in a trench because he's got the war campaign experience as well. Yes, we I know. So he knows what to do in the trench. Ingenuitive and fluent in French. I mean. so ingenuitive? Ingenuitive. Wow. Extra points to Lafayette for getting ingenuitive into the rhyme. I know. Hamilton. So he knows what to do in the trench. Ingenuitive and fluent in French. I mean. so you're gonna have ingenuitive and fluent. In French, trench, ingenuity, fluent in French. See how he went trench, the A, then he went B, B, back to A with the rhyme writing. Very clever there. So he knows what to do in the trench, ingenuity, and fluent in French. I mean, so you're gonna have to use him eventually. What's he gonna do in the bench? I mean, has more resilience or matches my practical, tactical brilliance. Has, has, see right there, he starts with that A scheme. Has more resilience or matches my tactical brilliance. Very nice A schemes. And then resilience, tactical, brilliance. Nice three-syllable scheme as well. Wow, what great rapping right there. I love that flow. No one has more resilience or matches my practical, tactical brilliance. You want to fight for your land back. I need my right hand man back. Get the right. Fight. For your land back. I need my right hand man back. Oh, the rhyme writing people. Brilliant. You want to fight for your land back? I need my right hand man back. Yeah. Get your right hand man back. No, you gotta get your right hand man back. I mean, you gotta put some button to the land, but the sooner the better to get your right hand man back. Gotta get your right hand man back. I mean, you gotta put some button to the land, but the sooner the better. Gotta put it to the letter. Hamilton, known for his letters, but also putting it to the letter, like the letter, the code of war. Right hand man back. Alexander Hamilton. Troops are waiting in the field for you. If you join us right now, together we can turn the tide. Oh, Alexander Ooh. Hamilton. I have snap soldiers track. that will yield for you. If we manage to get this right, they'll surrender my early. Think about it, snap tracks. You know, that comes into play with like R&B and blues, right? I love the tonal change right there because we just had Lafayette, just the French madman, the lyrical spitter, villain on the mic. And then you go immediately out of those aggressive into ooh, and then you bring back the strings. And you just have this smooth, more melodic singing. You had that snap track, baby. Like, we're about to get you down in the sheets right now. But we're on the rap sheets writing crazy lyrics. Let's go. We managed to get this right. They'll surrender my early life. No world will never be the same. Alexander. Wow. A. 
Hey, now I can see why you guys wanted me to do Guns and Ships. And think about the impact of that on Broadway. I mean, obviously, it was shocking having a play like Hamilton that incorporated raps, which was very adventurous at the time. But then to have a song like that, where we don't just have raps, we have crazy, fast, spitter delivery. And let's also think about this, right? He is not only rapping at that pace, he has to enunciate every word clearly. I can appreciate how difficult that is, but then to do it with an accent, acting like you're French with the French accent, and then you have to do it live to an audience. I gotta go watch the movie to see that one live. That is insane, man. I love the pacing to that one. Amazing, and the rhyme writing. Emmanuel, he's, he's a rapper, bro. He's a rapper. That writing, those technicals, those are higher level rapper technicals. The internal schemes that I pointed out, the multi-syllable external schemes, the flow switches on top of that, the wordplay, ticks all the boxes, man, I'm telling you. Vanessa, Los Angeles, can't stay for the live, but gotta show love. I need help is incredible. Blacklist is a masterpiece, but you already know that. Much respect, Knox, always. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, new video, I need help, out now. I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud to share my journey and my art with you guys. My new album, Blacklist 2. If a mod, LKC, if you could post, post the link to I Need Help, I would appreciate it if you guys want to check that out as well. Michael Estrada said, love the reactions. Looking forward to the cabinet meetings. Thank you so much. Yes. Hey, Kiara, I know this is uh, hindsight's always twenty twenty. She said, you're going to want lyrics up for guns and ships. How'd I do, Kiara? How'd I do without the lyrics? Come on, guys. You got a rapper in the building. Thank you so much for the super chat, though. Mike Sebastian, fun fact, LMM often talks about Lafayette's progression from struggling with English in the beginning of the show to having the fastest song on Broadway. The actor for Lafayette, David Diggs, is a beast. You know what? I couldn't agree with you more. He was an absolute beast on that one. That was, I'm impressed. Eric2582, hey, Knox, did you react to some Dizzy 8? Appreciate the recommendation, man. We could we could put it down the list. I think I did a song that Dizzy 8 is on when I did the uh, Saiyan Rap Cypher, if you want to check that out, brother. Thank you so much for the super chat donation. <laughs> Listen, uh, I don't want anyone to kill me. I'm going to play Guns and Ships so you can appreciate the fast flow. Let's do an over-under on the number of bathroom breaks that Knox has to take. For whatever reason, I already have to just run to the bathroom. You know I'm super quick on this, so you can spam ghosts in chat if you want. I'm going to sprint to the bathroom, and I'll be right back. I'm going three. Let's let's guess. And I tell you what, the winner, the winner of the bathroom break giveaway is going to get a signed Blacklist album. The winner will get a signed Blacklist album. So you can post your guess in chat. Knox is going with three. We'll see what you guys got. But listen, as you know, I have to stay hydrated. Otherwise, we lose my voice by the end of these very long reactions. All right, I'll be right back. Let's just play. Oh, no, we can't play it. We're not playing it. That's right. Just talk to space, everybody. I'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. What we got? Candy Cane said one. That's super ambitious, considering I just did my one Candy Canes. I guess I'm not going to go to the bathroom anymore. I'm going to try to do my best, Candy Canes. Vaso W said five. Parker Dude 56 said five. Wow. I got a really small bladder then. If we're going to do five. Oh, my God. 
David Everett said 3.5. David, that's the best guess I've seen. I have no idea how you can possibly do three, three and a half bathroom trips, but maybe we will defy logic and science today. Ariana, I told Ghost I put my money on four. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you so much. Patrick Small said, I. Patrick, I, <laughs> I is not a number. I is not a numerical representation of anything, Patrick. Unless we're going Roman numerals, bro. <laughs> the chosen one said, weak bladders. You guys are ruthless in chat. You guys are heathens. <laughs> Rock candy said toast. Okay. Well, let's just throw out random words today, everyone. That's a good one. No. <laughs> Kamal. Yeah. Okay. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to say one more. Kamal Hemada. I am taking you to Vegas, bro. All right. This is the best guess of them all. He said ne negative 20. So I don't know how that one's going to work either. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see how it plays out. <laughs> All right. This is, uh, this is history has its eyes on you. Let's do this. I was younger than you are now When I was given my first command I led my men straight into a massacre I witnessed their deaths first Led my men straight into a massacre I love how on the tail end of that With that sort of harder C consonant he lets that just trail off like he's pushing his chords and then he just drops down sort of whispers right there and he does it for the first line as well just really love that sort of rise and, and fall to the delivery of the singing when i was given my first command i led my men straight into a massacre i witnessed their deaths firsthand i made every mistake and felt the shame rise in me and even now I lie awake knowing Oh, what was that story? This is obviously uh, Washington talking and advising. What was it? Remember, we, we talked about this before. Washington kind of sucked as a war general. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> but he never got caught. So we'll give him that. And he, you know, he kept his men going. Found a way to keep morale going. So... He could lead men. He just wasn't very good at tactics and strategy. Um, what was it? It was like, uh, it was the French, ironically, that they were fighting at the time. I can't remember the name of the, of the fort where he took refuge at. He attacked the French. He was heralded as a hero. It was the first successful sort of surprise attack. And then the French extracted revenge. And at that one, he was going to hold up in a fort. And he was supposed to have help from the Indians. And the Indians looked at the fort. They're like, fuck. Hell no, we this is not gonna work. And they just bailed on him, and then yeah, his men did get just wrecked that day. Um, I'm just seeing if anybody wants to comment and just quickly look that one up. No, nope, we don't have that one yet. Okay, it's fine. Let's keep it rolling. Me, and even now I lie awake, knowing history has its eyes. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Devin Rothman said Fort Duquesne. I think it's spelled terribly wrong. It's probably enunciated even worse by me. But anyways, there we go for our history people in the building. Wow. What was that? Just a little bit of just hip hop element introduced there at a beautiful moment. Choir chanting. But do, 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 do. Is that a little bit of like just bass being tapped into the synthesizer there? I'm not sure what that sound was. That was dope though. Nice. Let me tell you what I wish I'd known. When I was young and dreamed of glory. You have no control. Who lives, who dies, who tells your story. Wow. Man, again, it feels like there's moments when it's like, take him to church, like gospel singing, I love it. I know that greatness lies in you. 
but remember from here on in, history has its eyes on you. Wow. History has its eyes on you. Oh. We got like pitch perfect going on in the building right there. About to take Hamilton to the riff off. You know what I'm saying? Come on, I saw that movie. I'm not afraid to admit it, but that was that was awesome. Acapella singing there to end it. History has its eyes on you. Again, like even the interludes, okay? Because that that's obviously an interlude sort of thing. Like a you know, setting the stage, setting the scene. Really. History has its eyes on you. We know who that's talking about, Hamilton. And what is the legacy that he's going to leave? Because that is one of the revolving themes around this is Hamilton's legacy and his impact upon history and what happens from there. But for me, right, a lot of times interludes are breathing moments. And the devil is in the details, I always say. And for me, there's just as much attention put into the musical production, into the performance, the lyricism, the tone setting of the interludes as there is to some of the more I guess, main songs and action-filled songs and plot-moving songs, which is really cool. And uh, everybody's getting excited, apparently, for Yorktown, the world turned upside down. So I suppose I am ready for this one as well. Let me just make sure. Did I shout out all donos so far? I think we're caught up before we keep it rolling. But let me just double-check. I just don't want to miss anyone. Right, Ariana. Yeah, Ariana got shouted out. All right, we're good. All right, here we go. This is Yorktown, people. Coming through in three, two, one. What was that? The revolution will not be televised? No, that was rewinding. Ooh. The Battle of Yorktown. 1781. Hmm. Monsieur Hamilton. Monsieur Lafayette. In command where you belong. Are you saying no sweat? Uh, We're finally on the field. We've had quite a run. Immigrants. We, we get, get the job done. So what happens if we win? I go back to France. I bring freedom to my people if I'm given the chance. We'll Ooh. be with you when you do. Go lead your men. I'll see you on the other side. Till we meet again. Let's go. Whoa. I love that. Immigrants get the job done. Talk your shit, as Stevie Knight would say. Shout out to Stevie, man. Hey, shout out to Sonny. Love your breakdowns, Knox. Can't wait till I get my blacklist CD. Thank you so much for the donation, Sonny. Much love to you, man. Go, lead your man. I see you on the other side. Because Lafayette, being from France, remember, he came over from France to fight our war. He didn't necessarily have an iron in the fire. He just really hated the British, but he made friends over here and... He's a hero over here as he's a hero in France. And Hamilton, as we know, came from the Caribbean. So not born in the colonies as well. Was often viewed as an immigrant too. My people, if I'm given the chance. We'll be with you when you do. Go, lead your man. I'll see you on the other side. Till we meet again. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And I'm not throwing away my shot. Ah. I am not I love that. Again, we've had so many moments of this, like with the Aaron Burr, sir. And there's just so many connections. I just love how the details connect and we're bringing back that theme. I am not throwing away my shot. And it has, again, a different meaning right now because we're literally in the middle of a war fighting at Yorktown. So Hamilton leading his men back in the field is not going to throw away his shot in this scenario. He is going to keep firing and try to live and fight on. Bam! A memory. This is where it gets me. On my feet, the enemy ahead of me. If this is the Did he just have just one of the most poetic lines I've ever heard in that first bar? I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory. <laughs> I imagine death so much it feels like a memory. Wow. What a way to put that. Because he's essentially lived it so many times in his mind that upon past reflection, it now feels like a memory because even though he hasn't actually died because of his 
vivid imagination and contemplation of death it feels that way like something he's already been through and something he's kind of already accepted and comes to term come to terms with in the past what a what a bar i imagine death so much it feels more like a memory this is where it gets me on my feet the enemy ahead of me if this is the end of me at least Wow, was that, see, again, I can't remember everything, obviously, because what, it's been two weeks in between doing this, but that is a really cool connection as well. Thank you so much, chat. Jason Landau said, this line was in my shot. Wow, so we still have amazing connections. A memory, this is where it gets me. On my feet, the enemy ahead of me. If this is the end of me, at least I have a friend with me. Weapon in my hand, a command of my men with me. Then I re Repping in my hand, the command of my men with me. I love that. Just up in the cadence, back to down in the delivery. Hey, Mark Bajorlo, watching with my young lad, Gabe, and wife, Elizabeth. Love this. Thank you so much, Mark. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Elizabeth. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. The end of me, at least I have a friend with me. Repping in my hand, the command of my men with me. Then I remember my allies is expecting me. Not only that, my allies is expecting. We gotta go, guys. Great flip on expecting. Eliza is expecting him. She wants him to survive and to make it home, but also she's expecting because she's pregnant. He's got more to fight for. My Eliza's expecting me. Not only that, my Eliza's expecting. We gotta go, gotta get the job done. Gotta start a new nation, gotta meet my son. Get the bullets out your gun, get the bullets. <sighs> so many bars. Gotta start a new nation, have to meet my son. Son, literally being... His wife, who was pregnant with his son, but also that could be starting a nation in that sense because you're starting a new journey, so starting something brand new, a new life. But his son, I also take it directly as America and the nation that they're fighting for and that they want to give birth to in the sense and the expecting play on words. Very, very clever writing. The job done, gotta start a new nation, gotta meet my son. Get the bullets out your gun, the bullets out your gun. Take the bullets out your gun. We got battle rap going on now. Just take away those lyrical bullets, baby. Not let a straight gun shot give us away. We will fight up close. Seize the moment of stay in it. It's either that or meet the business end of a bayonet. The code word is Rochambeau. Take me. Rochambeau. You have your orders now. Go, man, go. So Rochambeau. Go, man, go. Again, nice bend on words. And then, of course, in those times, obviously, with the old mus muskets that took forever to reload, if you got in close quarters, you were fighting with bayonets. I mean, it got bloody and ugly then. The word is no shampoo. Take me. No shampoo. You have your orders now. Go, man, go. And so the American experiment begins with my friends all scattered to the... Oh, yeah. Wow. We got a third. And I've heard rappers do it so many times, and sometimes it just blows by you, but son as well. I want to see my son, but also could be son like S-U-N, like the sun coming up tomorrow. I want to see another day on this earth. This is the center of the bayonet. Code word is Rochambeau, dig me. Rochambeau. You have your orders now, go man, go. And so the American experiment begins with my friends all scattered to the winds. Lawrence is in South Carolina, redefined and bravery. We'll never be free until we end slavery. When we finally drive the British away, Lafayette. We'll never be free until we end slavery. Another very deep and very good bar. And we know Hamilton was a big abolitionist. He wanted to get rid of of slavery nice bar right there we'll never be free until we end slavery when we finally drive the british away lafayette is there waiting in chesapeake bay how do we know that this plan hey shout out to chesapeake bay baby you got md in the house knox hill from pg county md people you know i like my maryland blue crabs and old bay seasoning around here y'all don't know about that spice in the sauce british away lafayette is there waiting in chesapeake bay how do we know that this plan would work? We had a spy on the inside. That's right. Hercules Mulligan. Had a spy on the British government. I take the measurements, information, and then I smuggle it. Up to my brother's revolutionary covenant. I'm running with the sons of liberty, and I am loving it. See, that's what I I'm running with the Sons of Liberty and I am loving it. Shout out to Mickey D's. We are loving that around here. That just clicks the golden arches of bars, baby. I love this production switch. Da -na 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 na 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 You just have a little bit more grunge, a little bit more grit. And then he gets aggressive with the delivery. Shout out to the OG and OP as well. Hercules Mulligan. 
a key spy for us. Remember, I told you the story in the last live about one of the biggest things that he did while he was spying, literally saved Washington from being captured and allowed us ultimately to help win the war. Revolutionary coming in, I'm under with the sons of revolutionary coming in like just the way that he gets so raspy with that voice information and then i smuggle it what? to my brother's revolutionary coming in i'm under with the sons of liberty and i am loving it see that's what happens when you up against the ruffians we in the shit now somebody's gotta shovel it hercules mulligan i need no introduction when you knock me down i get the fuck back up again <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Hercules got a little excited there. Oh, oh ghost. We couldn't save him in time for that. Ghost is uh, virgin ears. He doesn't need that. Okay. Sorry about that, ghost. Hercules was being a ruffian with the language, though. And also, I like how he dropped ruffian into his raps. And I've said this before. I've talked about the renegade, rebellious nature of rap music and how it lends itself so well when you think about it to a historical period where rap didn't exist. But you can make that connection and that tie-in. And just the way that these lyrics are written, you know, these are these are songs that can apply to today, to today's themes of this renegade, rebellious nature and vibe that rap is always connotated with. And then you just take it and connect it historically to the rebellion of the American movement for independence. And it just, it always works so well. To my brother's revolutionary covenant I'm under with the sons of liberty And I am loving it See that's what happens when you up against the ruffians We in the shit now, somebody's gotta shovel it Hercules And I do like that line, we in the shit now, somebody's gotta shovel it Shoveling it yeah. Look it, I need no introduction When you knock me down, I get the fuck back up again yeah. What is happening right now? I feel like I'm doing an iris jig at the same time that I'm on the DJ record scratching at the same time. What is happening in my life, man? Scratch. Or is that the banjo? I love it. This is just the amalgamation of so many different genres into one. Ooh, nice reverb out on that record scratch. DJ's turn up. Yo, is there is there a DJ live at Hamilton that's on the ones and twos doing these different record scratches? Because that's even more dope. After a week. And now we've got like, you know, barbaric, like Scottish Braveheart theme song happening now. The fighting, a young man in a red coat stands on a parapet. We lower our guns as he frantically waves their white handkerchief. And just like that, it Did he just bend parapet to rhyme with handkerchief? I think that just happened. Our guns as he frantically waves their white handkerchief. And just like that, it's over. We tend to our wounded. We count our dead. Black and white soldiers wonder alike if this really means freedom. Not yet. Black and white soldier. Wow, we're getting that theme of slavery is now being discussed and i know from the uh the stuff that you guys have said so far and the stuff that i read on miranda because i i'm just so infatuated with this guy now and any of you guys want to recommend books or more things to learn about him I, I would love to but he said going into this that you know slavery was a huge influence and definitely an issue that he wanted to address while doing hamilton because there's a lot of times when we talk about our founding fathers and the forming of our nation and what kind of gets glossed over is the fact that a number of our founding fathers owned slaves. And slavery was an issue then. And this country was formed not just on the backs of whites sacrificing their lives. I mean, plenty of slaves fought in the Revolutionary War itself and lost their lives as well. Just wonder like if this really means freedom. Not yet. We negotiate the terms of surrender. I see George Washington smile. We escort their men out of your town. 
They stagger home single file. Tens of thousands of people flood the streets. There are screams and church bells ringing. And as our fallen foes retreat, I hear the drinking song they're singing. Wow, there's that marching drum. You know what was really cool was you had the buildup, right? And then the battle. And then afterwards, the aftermath of the battle. And notice how everything just dropped down. And everything was toned down. Even the delivery, you know, was down here. It was in this register and range. And then as it started to build again, we started to rise. We started to rise. And then we really pushed out and came with the delivery. And all the production rise with it. And you had this massive crescendo. And then you brought back which is a theme that I'm seeing when you really want everything to register on a different level. That's when he reintroduces the choir singing and the stacking of harmonies and the stacking of vocal layers just to really fill that space and make it totally rise. And, and you feel the passion with it and the rise of the delivery. And this is a key turning point for our nation because this is, this is the victory at Yorktown, the surrender of the British, the forming of what we know as America. What a song. What comes next, Base. though? I'm guessing what comes next. Let's go. Hey, one thing I do want to check real quick. I asked you guys about the DJ scratching, and no, it's pre-recorded, the DJ scratching? Oh, man, it'd be so dope if they had a, a DJ down in the pits, wouldn't it? That would be something totally unique for a play. Right next to the, uh, you know, the violins... And the cellos, you just got a DJ sat there on the ones and twos. <laughs> How dope would that be? Joe Reuter, listen to the Hamilcast episodes with LMM and Alex Lacamoire. He arranged the whole musical. You'll learn a ton in those nine episodes. That's a great recommendation. Thank you so much, Joe. We really appreciate the super chat donation as well, man. Hey, Vegacore101, check out Wrote My Way Out by Nas, Dave East, Lynn Manuel, Miranda, and Alo Blanc. Ooh. If you got Nas on a Hamilton track, man, you know I am there. I definitely want to react to the mixtape as well. Countdown start. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat donation. Much love to you. All right, I'm excited. What comes next? Well, let's find out. Hey, the price of my war is not a price that they're willing to pay. Is this, is this King George? Is this our boy George? Or's not a price that they're willing to pay. Is it? Insane. You cheat with the French. Now I'm fighting with France and with Spain. I'm so blue. <laughs> I thought that we. I want to see King George live. He might be my favorite character of all of this. Made an arrangement when you went away. You were mine to subdue. <laughs> well, even despite our estrangement, I've got a small query for you. He is blue because obviously one of the colors of Great Britain, as we know, is, is blue, but also he's feeling down. And what's this small query? Ooh, what comes next? You've been freed. Do you know how hard it is to leave? Oh, this is the same. Melody and connection that we had to oh god hang on I can cheat. Let's scroll up What's the name of this? You'll be back. You'll be back. Oh man. What a great connection to you'll be back Oh, same registered tone as well You're on your clever, but obviously the lyrics have changed Awesome. Wow Do you have a clue what happens now? Oceans rise Empires fall it's much harder when it's all your call All alone across the sea When your people say they hate you 
Don't come crawling back to me. Oh, I love this. I just love that little last impact and hit just to drive that point home. Peace out. The relationship is over. We have broken up now, but you will soon find with great power comes great responsibility. Right. We got some shout outs real quick before we're on to the next one. Patrick. What's up, Patrick? Keep up the good work, Nox. You're my favorite guy who does breakdowns. By the way, if you do anime rap, I recommend DPS level zero. What is level zero? Thank you so much for... Daddy Fat Snaps, man, I've done a few of his songs now. Definitely more on deck, that's for sure. Ariana, Lauren's interlude comes after Dear Theodosia. It was not included on the soundtrack. It was added during the live performance. All right, what does that mean? Should we react to it? Because we have a ton of songs to react to, people. So I'm only going to do it if it's, like, integral to this. If it's not on the official list, I feel like we should just jump into Dear Theodosia because we still have a lot more songs to do. And we don't know when the old YouTube police are going to come around these parts. Yeehaw, cowboy, motherfucker. Oh, I'm not going to curse. Kiara, he's on stage a total eight minutes and he steals the show. Groff plays this so, so well. You can just tell. I mean, it's so charismatic, the delivery. He's one of those guys you just want to hate him, but you love him at the same time. King George is the only white person casted. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Kenny B, music. Alex Garcia, the King's actor is great because he is... A spotter as in he spits when he speaks and plays and it makes it so much better visually. Does he? <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. All right, you guys said it's not integral. Some people are saying do it. LKC, my mod, says you don't need to watch it, but it's not long if you want to. <sighs> yeah, but we have to keep pausing. All right, that's fine. We'll do it. Oh no, is that Lawrence on the battlefield when he died? I may not live to see your glory. Alexander, there's a letter for you from South Carolina. Well, I will gladly Oh, this is Lawrence's death, isn't it? John Lawrence, I'll read it later. No, it's not. And when our children tell our story, will you read it? They'll tell the story of Oh. On Tuesday, the 27th, Lieutenant Colonel John Lawrence was killed in a gunfight against British troops in South Carolina. These troops had not yet received word from Yorktown that the war was over. He is buried here until his family can send for his remains. As you may know, Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence was engaged in recruiting 3,000 men for the first all-black military regiment. The surviving members of this regiment have been returned to their masters. Tomorrow there'll be more of us. Mm. Alexander, are you all right? Okay, well that was sad. Is there any other noise? I have so much work to do. There it is. Oh, he's going to dive into his work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Rest in peace to Lawrence. Can we get an RIP for Lawrence in chat, please? Bro died fighting, man. You know what sucks about his death, too, is that the war was won at this point in time, and this was just one of those skirmishes that happened afterwards when not everyone got the memo because we didn't have email yet. KM, here for part two. Thanks for doing these, man. Truly enjoy your content. Hey, thank you so much, KM, for the super chat. Much love to you, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. RIPs are going left and right for Lawrence, man. Pour some out. We'll drink some water to Lawrence. Okay. All right, people. Dear, dear Theodosia. Am I saying that right? I think I am. I say what I want, and if you guys tell me I'm stressing the wrong syllable, I don't care. Dear Theodosia, what to say to you? 
You have my eyes, you have your mother's name. When you came into the world, you cried, and it broke my heart. Ooh, he's got a nice higher octave, doesn't he? I'm dedicating every day to you. Domestic life was never quite my style when you smile. You knock me out, I fall apart Ooh. And I thought I was so smart You will come of age with our young nation We'll bleed and fight for you Love that line, you will come of age to our young nation This is a father speaking to his dear Theodosia Isn't there? You, you can feel that, it just has those Oh, dad vibes, this one's gonna pull at my heartstrings, isn't it? Who's speaking here? It's Burr singing to his daughter, alright We'll make it right for you if we lay a strong enough foundation, we'll pass it on to you. We'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away. Someday, someday. Yeah, you'll blow us all away. Someday, I love this. someday. When you smile, I am undone. And there's Hamilton now talking to his son, Philip. My son, look at my son. Pride is not the word I'm looking for. There is so much more inside me now. That's that's a great reflective bar right there. You know, pride is not the word I'm looking for when you when you gaze upon your child. It's like so many emotions fill your heart at once and you never thought that you had more space in your heart and then you, you look at them and somehow it just expands more each day and every time that you look at them and gravity just pulls you towards them and your world just revolves around, wow I'm gonna get emotional around around your child man it's it, it's a beautiful thing having a family there is so much more inside me now Philip, you outshine the morning sun, my sun, when you smile. Love that play on sun. You outshine the morning sun, my sun, playing off of the U, S-U-N to S-O-N. I fall apart, and I thought I was so smart. My father wasn't around. My father wasn't around. I swear that I'll be around for you. I'll do it. Wow, that's very important. That's a very important moment right there. You hear how Burr and Hamilton sing together. Because because we know Hamilton's story. We know Burr's story as well in the divide. And ultimately, it's Burr who kills Hamilton, isn't it? So, friends turned enemies, but still have moments of that togetherness. And right here... They have that unifying factor that they're both essentially orphans and they can relate to that. And then they're bringing their children up into this world and, and struggling with being a father when they didn't have that father figure to guide them and to set the standard for them. And I love how, you know, Lynn chooses to have them sing to those lines together there and them to have that sort of cohesion right now. Very interesting point to do that there. Swear that I'll be around for you. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll make the world safe and sound for you. We'll come of age with our young nation. We'll bleed and fight for you. We'll make it right for you. If we lay a strong enough foundation, we'll pass it on to you. We'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away. Someday. I'm not crying. You're crying. Oh, that was, that was beautiful. Oh man. 
oh, I don't know why. It just it put me in literally in the hospital room when my girls were born, and I'm just sat there holding both of them for the the first time, and nothing else matters but that moment. That oh, come on, give me a break. Whew. Right, okay, all right, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> It's not sadness, it's happiness. It's not it's not tears of sadness. It's uh that's amazing. Oh, that's cool. Oh, music is a beautiful thing, what it can do to you and, and your emotions and how it can just change your emotions instantly. I think we could take the headphones off of ghosts. I think we can. I'll tell you what, whoever's doing the uh, the bathroom break guesses, all right, we'll count this one. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to the bathroom real quick, guys. I think it's a good mo I, I gotta I gotta recover myself anyway, so I'll just go real quick and then we'll keep it rolling. We're we're on nonstop next. Are we right in terms of timing now? Because we did Lauren's inter interlude and we did the beautiful song of Dear Theodosia. So this is where we are now. All right, comment ghost in chat. Oh, all right. We're back. We're back, everybody. We're back. That was beautiful. It got me. It's all good. Bellion. Howard Ho series, How Hamilton Works, goes into all the musical connections between songs. No reaction needed, but you will enjoy the breakdowns. Thank you so much for the super chat, Bellion. Yeah, thanks for passing on more information. Really appreciate it. KM, here for part two. Thanks for doing these, man. Truly enjoy your content. Hey, thank you so much, KM. Much love to you guys. So we're on two now. Two pit stops along the way, along the journey of life, people. Whoever guessed 2.5, you're pretty close. I don't know how we'll make that 0.5 happen, but we'll do our best. Mike, Sebastian, in the second half of the act, it's important to note that James Madison was Hercules Jefferson. Was Lafayette. What? James Madison was Hercules. Okay. I think you forgot a comma there. Jefferson was Lafayette comma philip was lawrence oh so it's the same actor and then they just uh change character okay all right cool mick sebastian the next song non-stop is the last song in act one so we're halfway there i'm expecting at least four more bathroom breaks oh my god we're only halfway there <laughs> oh shit oh shiza <laughs> Oh, I'm so ambitious when I title these. All right, it's all right. We're only an hour 20 into today. Let's keep it going. After the war, I went back to New York. After the war, I went back to New York. Ooh, I finished up my it's like as a Beastie Boys vibe to it. After the war, I went back to New York. Bum, 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 bum. Reason I practice law. I practice law. Burr work next door. Even though we Ooh. started at the very same time, Alexander Hamilton began to climb. How to account for his rise to the top? Man, the man is non-stop. Gentlemen mm. of the jury, I'm curious. Bear with me. Are you a non-stop like New York subway? Now that we're making history. This 
is the first murder trial of our brand new nation. The liberty behind the liberation. I intend to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt with my assistant counsel. Oh, counsel Hamilton, sit down. A client, Lemmy Weeks, is innocent. Call your first witness. That's all you had to say. Okay. One more thing. Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Ooh, dun, dun, dun. that just gets a little bluesy there almost. Ooh, maybe you're doing. Uh, why do you write like you're running out of time? Write day and night like you're running out of time. Every day you fight like you're running out of time. Keep on fighting in the meantime. Non-stop. Corruption's such an old song that we can sing along in harmony. And nowhere is it stronger than in Albany. This colony's economy's increasingly stalling. And honestly, that's why public... Colony's economy. I love that. Stalling and honestly. Again, he just loves to start punching his little internal schemes. Even when it's sort of a slower flow and more kind of sing-songy with the raps. Shout out to Ding Dong. What's up, brother? You're awesome. Thank you so much, Ding Dong. Stronger than in Albany. This colony's economy is increasingly stalling. And honestly, that's why public service seems to be calling me. I practice the law. practically perfected it. I've seen injustice in the world and I've corrected it. Now for a strong central democracy. If not, then I'll be Socrates throwing verbal rocks at these Oh, now for a strong central democracy. Now we're getting into some more of the, the politics that led to the formation of the party, Federalist Party, and some of Hamilton's views when he shaped literally our nation as we talked about and went through in the first video that we did how integral he was to the, the foundation of our nation and in in implementing our financial institutions and how a lot of things work and helping us to have a strong centralized democratic form of government and what's interesting here is that we're connecting some of that to hamilton learning and shaping his value system through his time practicing law through seeing the injustices in the world and how important it is to defend people's rights and how important it is to consolidate how decisions are made and how they're done very interesting, that connection that Lynn's pointing at here. And then also, I think that's theme one. Theme two that I'm noting so far through this song is this journey. This journey of, of Hamilton, but it's not just the journey and story of Hamilton. Lynn wants to hit home that this is also the journey of Burr because their paths are constantly colliding, separating, colliding, and separating. So at this time, again... They, fate kind of brings them together in a sense because they're both practicing law in New York. As much as they have different, they have just as much in common. And there's kind of that thread that's being woven throughout this. In at the Constitutional Convention. I was chosen for the Constitutional Convention. There is a New York junior delegate. Now what I'm going to say may sound indelicate. Uh, Shows and proposes his own form of government. What? His own plan for a new form of government. What? Talks for six hours. The convention is listless. Right, young man. Yo, who the F is this? Why do you always say what do you believe? Why do you always say what you believe? Hey, why do you always say what you believe? Again, you have a lot of this connections to the differences between Hamilton and Burr. And what is the advice that Burr gives at the beginning when Hamilton first meets Burr? You know, smile and talk less. And Burr is very reserved, isn't he? You know, Burr plays a lot of his cards close to his chest, right? Whereas Hamilton wears his heart on his sleeve and is very outspoken. He's already turning heads. And then there's also... The journey of Burr and Hamilton as Hamilton is rising. I mean, Hamilton was critical again to a lot of points of the forming of our nation. You know, he encouraged and was a part of that Annapolis Convention that called for ultimately the Philadelphia Convention where the Constitution was formed in May because the Articles of Confederation were just not good enough for us at the time. Why do you always say what you believe? Why do you always say what you believe? Every proclamation guarantees ammunition for your enemy oh, oh, oh. Why do you ride like it's going out of style? And again, Hamilton did a lot of writing, a lot of papers, a lot of essays. Every day you fight like it's going out of style. He wrote a lot defending the Constitution and the Federalist Papers. And in support of that, him and Madison and all of them were integral. Do what you do. Alexander? Aaron Burr, sir. Well, it's the middle of the night. Can we con- There it is, the knock on the door, shouting out how we started, and then the Aaron Burr, sir. We always gotta just have that little Easter egg throughout. Hey, quick shout out to um, 
Antra S, did I miss much? Crazy shift tonight. Hook some of my patients to your music, Knox. Let's go. I am a nurse. They love Blacklist. Hey, <laughs> in the building. We scheme in the building, you schemer. What's going on, brother? Sexy chicken energy. Oh, he's going to make me say it. Ooh, woo. What's going on, Mr. Scheme? And don't think I missed that 69 cent donation, you little devil. You, you sex ninja kitten. Alexander? Aaron Burr, sir. Well, it's the middle of the night. Can we confer, sir? Is this a legal matter? Yes, and it's important to me. What do you need? Burr, you're a better lawyer than me. Okay. I know I talk too much. I'm a... Important to me, lawyer than me. If you're incredible in court, you're succinct, persuasive. My client needs a strong defense. You're the solution. Who's your client? The new U.S. Constitution. Oh, no, hear me out. No way. A series of essays of non. I love that flip. Mostly published, defending the document to the public. No one will read it. I disagree. And if it fails, Bird, that's why we need it. The Constitution's a mess. So it needs amendments. It's full of contradictions. So is independence. We have to start somewhere. No. No way. You're making a mistake. Good night. Hey, what are you waiting for? What do you- Ooh, I love that record scratch right there. And again, we're gonna have a switch up. Hey, you're making a mistake. Good night. Hey, what are you waiting for? What do you stall for? What? We won the war. What was it all for? Do you support this constitution? Of course. Then defend it. And what if you're backing the wrong horse? Burr studied and we fought and we killed for the notion of a nation we now get to build for once in your life take a stand with pride i don't understand how you stand to the side oh again this this constant theme of the different personality traits and just the different philosophies between hamilton and burr and i love how you know the question is proposed and how it's all set up when hamilton talks about you know representing his client and and Burr being a good lawyer and being able to weave a good argument. And it did take very good arguments to defend the Constitution, hence the Federalist Papers, hence all of the, you know, what was put into it. Because remember, we were, we were a young nation. We were still a very divided nation. There was a large chunk of our nation that, you know, when independence was happening, they still sided with the British. They were loyalists. And now all of a sudden we separated. There's so much uncertainty with our future. It's been shown that the Articles of Confederation aren't good enough. We've had the Philadelphia Convention now. You know, we've ratified the Declaration of Independence. But now we have to support that policy. And we have to pour support into that. And obviously the Constitution did not cover everything that needed to be covered. Because again, we're forming a new nation. Hence why you've had the different amendments that have come out since then. Touching upon that, shout out to We Scheme again, coming through with more of that sexy chicken energy, but this time Susan doesn't keep 30%. Naughty, naughty Susan, we keep that away from her. Can we get some fire emoji in chat for a fellow reactor, a fellow music artist, none other than Scheme? Much love to you, man. Thanks for coming through. Take a stand with pride. I don't understand how you stand to the side. I'll keep all my plans close to my chest. That's the biggest critique of Burr is, you know, he's he's an opportunist and you don't know what he stands for. He's he's the one that doesn't get involved in the fight and doesn't sacrifice until the fight is cleared and he can see who's going to be the winner and then he tends to align himself with the winning side. I am sailing off to London. I am accompanied by someone who always pays. I have found a wealthy husband who will keep me in comfort for all my days. Is that Angela? He is not a lot of fun, but there's no one who can match you for turn up phrase. My Alexander. Don't ah. Look at where you are. Oh, we got that love triangle being reintroduced. I'm sorry, uh, Jonna said it's hard to watch because you're pausing so much. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, my hand slipped. I'm not pausing anymore, I promise. a fraction of your time If I could grant you peace of mind Would that be enough? Alexander joins forces with James Madison and John Jay to write a series of essays defending the new United States Constitution there we go. titled The Federalist Papers. And Hamilton wrote most of the essays defending and it. And was to write a total of 25 essays, the work divided evenly among the three men. In the end, 
They wrote 85 essays in the span of six months. John Jay got sick after writing five. Mm -hmm. James Madison wrote 29. Hamilton wrote the other 51. Baller. How do you write like you're running out of time? Write day and night like you're running out of time. Oh, that's so clever. We tease this and we foreshadow it with how do you write like you're running out of time. And then it really sets up this example right here of him literally like where do you find the time to do this to write this much to produce 51 essays defending the constitution and the ratification of it all that's that's amazing i love that connection and it was teased at the beginning i didn't know where we were going now all of a sudden the pin is dropped that's so dope do you write like you're running out of time right day and night like you're running out of time every day you fight like you're running out of time like you're running out of time are you running out of time to leave I'm doing Ooh. the best I can to get the people that I need I'm asking you to be my right hand Treasury man. or state I know it's a lot to Treasury ask or state. to leave behind the world you know Sir, do you want me to run the Treasury or State Department? Treasury Let's go <laughs> Let's go <laughs> And one of the most important decisions to the financial institutions of our nation was decided and then responded to with a let's go. <laughs> let's go. Treasury. Uh. Let's go. Alexander. I have to leave. Alexander. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Helpless. They are asking me to leave. Look around. Helpless, never be satisfied. Oh man, we are just using lyrics that we've. Oh, I love all just the different connections, man. Just that's amazing. This is cool. Wow, I love the different delivery of all those lines because it was all in time. Like it wasn't distracting. It was like organized sort of chaos. And you could see where Lynn started developing this technique because obviously it was huge in the landmark song that we reacted to, which first put us on this journey with We Don't Talk About Bruno. And all of those different voices and the repeating of lines that happened in the beginning of the song and the way that it was stacked and the way that it was sung. So you had a lot going on, but each voice managed to cut through and you managed to pick up on all the different lines and it just contributed to the overall synergy of it. Man, that is just impressive putting together. Gotta shout out some people real quick while we're paused. Mark, Mark again. Gabe, thought you may need another pause. Gabe. This pause goes out to Gabe, everyone. Thank you, Gabe. We pause a lot on this channel. It's a pausey, pausey pause. Matthew Garrett. Yo, love from Bar Harbor. <laughs> Glad you're vibing with Hamilton. Unfortunately, can't see this live, Aaron's, but I look forward to watching this video later tonight. Appreciate you, boss. Appreciate you, Matthew. We're doing, we're doing good so far. Knock on wood, no strikes thus far. Ronald McKelly, is there a chance when, if you end up watching the movie, that you could provide your thoughts on the show and how it differs between what you listen to with the music versus actually seeing it play out? Would you guys be interested in that? I, I could definitely put together a piece of content relating to that. Yeah, if, if you guys are interested in that, we could definitely do something like that. And then shout out to Jay Paris. My leopard gecko is named Alexander after Hamilton. He was found abandoned in an alley in NYC. Today is his adoption anniversary. Great breakdowns. I like how you put that adoption anniversary. You, you saved your gecko, man. That's awesome. Shout out to Alexander the gecko. Can we put a gecko emoji in chat? That'd be dope. Let's put that in chat. Thanks so much for the super chat. Ariana, have we mentioned LMM is an absolute genius? Oh, yeah. We're definitely there. We're definitely there. A lot of people are saying yes that they want me to do that after seeing it. Okay. All right. We'll make a deal then. For me, in terms of plans... Obviously, I want to get through this play. 
I uh, really want to react to the Hamilton mixtape because you guys have said like Royce is on it, Nas is on it. So many great artists are on it. So I'm definitely going to react to the Hamilton mixtape. And then maybe I'll go watch Hamilton finally. And then I'll do a video and uh, do like a review and give my thoughts on it and compare it to this and what I've thought. Way much. throwing away my shot and right there we just have one more shot that is heard around the world right there i just love the way that was put i also saw someone comment in chat that i'm impressing with my history brain right now listen it's kind of cheat codes for knox because uh i've always loved history i've always just been infatuated with history i love reading about a lot of wars and stuff but yeah I i've always been a huge history buff um i've read a number of history books number of biographies number of, of military theory books Guns, Germs, and Steel. That's the latest one I've been reading. That's kind of, well, we'll get into that another day. But yeah, I've, I've always loved history. I've studied it. Um, I've always had a really good memory. That's always helped me. Uh, I don't know why I'm going to tell a quick side story. But uh, I took a U.S. history class back in high school. And uh, all the AP students had to work really hard, you know, and take the AP test for uh, college credits. So I decided that I was going to do the AP test, but not actually do all the work that consisted of the AP class. I was just going to skate by in the in the regular class. And my teacher met with me and said, I don't know why you're doing this, but I can't stop you. And I said, yeah, it's fine. And she gave me extra work and stuff. I never did it. Uh, but then, you know, I bought a couple books to study for the test and to prep for it and literally read those books the night before the test and then walked in. And I don't know how they rated anymore, but back then it was out of out of five and I got a five. And I was one of two students to get a five in all of her AP U.S. history classes. And I didn't even take the AP class. So that's my cool history story for you guys and how much I do love history and studying it. And it feels like I do okay with it sometimes. We're on to what I missed. Hey, someone just said, that one guy, <laughs> oh, Gabe, I'm so sorry, Gabe. Gabe, it's all meant in good fun, though, man. I, I really do appreciate you coming on the channel. Here's another pause for Gabe. Also, can't wait for you to eventually get into the Heights as well. One of my favorite soundtracks ever. Hey, I, we'll put the Heights on it. That's dope, man. Lila Clausen, best song stage production-wise masterpiece. I couldn't agree more. It's awesome. I would pay $20 on Patreon for you to react to the full film. I'm sure I'm not alone. Hey, thank you so much, man. All right, well, it's something we definitely got to consider because it seems like there's a lot of people that are uh, interested in that. All right, let's keep it rolling. 17, set, set, 17, set, set, 17. 1789. How does the bastard, orphan, immigrant, decorated war vet, unite the colonies through more debt, fight the other founding fathers till he... Wow. Bastard, orphan, da, 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 da. Da, da. And it's a nice little one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So great syllable writing to make sure that that flow pocket works, but also great cadence delivery as well to highlight the ups and the downs with that. Let's go. Set, set, 17, set, set, 17. 1789. How does the bastard, orphan, immigrant, decorated war vet do? the colonies through more debt fight the other founding fathers till he has to forfeit have it all lose it all you ready for more yet treasury secretary washington's the president every american experiment sets a precedent not so fast someone came along to resist him pissed him off until we had a two-party system you haven't met him yet you haven't had the chance because he's been kicking ass as the ambassador to france but someone's got to keep the american we're getting on Jefferson Artway, Thomas. Ambassador of France. Simply must meet Thomas, Thomas. Thomas Jefferson's coming home. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's coming home. Thomas Jefferson's coming home. Thomas Jefferson's coming home. Thomas Jefferson's coming home. Lord, he's been off in Paris for so long. A new player has entered the arena. Following us to revolution, there is no more status quo. But the sun comes up and the world still spins. I have 
Fort Lafayette draft a declaration Then I said I gotta go I gotta be in Monticello Now the work at home begins <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we definitely feel those lines more in, in the days of lockdown And you know, the disease which must not be named for the algorithm But, you know, work at home There's quite a few people out there, I'm sure, in chat That uh, have been working at home Work from home from Monticello, but also Jefferson literally talking about like the work from the United States of America for building our nation coming back from France. Joe Reuter, get those earmuffs back on ghosts before say no to this. Well, we're on what I missed right now, so we'll keep it in mind for say no to this. So what did I miss? What did I miss? Ooh, okay. All right, got a little swing going on now. So what did I miss? Rock around the clock. Virginia, my home sweet home. I want to give you a kiss. Mm. I'm going to rock around the clock tonight. Come on. <laughs> I've been in Paris meeting lots of different ladies. I guess I basically missed the late 80s. I travel the wide, wide world. <laughs> I missed the late 80s, but in this case, those 80s a couple hundred years ago. Get back to this. <laughs> There's a letter on my desk from the president. Haven't even put my bag down yet. Sally Beale. The president's assembling a cabinet, and then I am to be the secretary of state. Great, and I'm already standing. I mean, this is toe tap, and I'd love to see the choreography to this part right now. Yet, Sally, be a lamb, darling, won't you open it? It's just the president's assembling a cabinet, and then I am to be the secretary. President's assembling a cabinet again. Just nice multi syllabic schemes right there. Open it. It's just the president's assembling a cabinet, and then I am to be the secretary of state. Great, and I'm already. We got a Sally Field shout out. Let's Just go. got home and now I'm headed up to New York. Headed to New York, headed to New York. Looking at the rolling fields, I can't believe that we... But da 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 but again, this, the jazzy and the blues influences. And as LKC said, a little scat sound. You got scat on it. We are free. Ready to face whatever's awaiting me in NYC. But who's waiting for me when I step in the place? My friend James Madison, red in the face. He grabs my arm and I respond, what's going on? Thomas, we are engaged in a battle for our nation's very soul. Can you get us out of the mess we're in? Oh. Hamilton's new financial plan is nothing less than government control. I've been fighting for the South alone. Where have you been, uh, France? <laughs> we have to win. Well, what did I miss? What, what, what did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, not the organs now. Into a political abyss. Ooh, take him back to church. I had my first cabinet meeting today. Y'all guess I better think of something. Even that. You hear just the ad libs just adding to that. I had my first cabinet meeting today. I guess I better think of something to say. I'm already gone my way to get to the bottom of this. What did I miss? Oh. Mr. Jefferson, welcome home. Mr. Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton. Mr. Jefferson, welcome home. Nice. Mr. Jefferson, welcome home, sir. What did I miss? Ooh. See, that felt more like a classical Broadway track. I mean, what a change of pace. I thought it was interesting that you had Jefferson come in, and it's like Jefferson's bringing a different sort of school of thought and a different vibe with him, isn't he? Because there's no, there's no rapping for Mr. Jefferson, right? It's that sort of old school balance and that scat, that, 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 and that singing. And I think that that was chosen purposefully from a music production perspective as well to represent just a tonal change from the new character of Thomas a Jefferson that we have introduced into the building, ladies and gentlemen. We all know Thomas Jefferson. I have been to the Jefferson Memorial in D.C. Mike Sebastian, fun fact, what I missed was written as a jazz song because, as LMM put it, while the rest of the U.S. has evolved to hip-hop, Jefferson, who was in France, here we are, was still stuck in the jazz age. Excited for the cabinet battle. Yes. Hey, we align. 
with the analysis, man. Thank you so much for the super chat. Sonny, loving this. How did you get to sexy chicken time? Still new to me. Not sure. Sonny, direct donations go to the uh, the sexy. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. They go to the sexy chicken meter. The direct donations. Uh, the super chats, I obviously shout out. And they go a long way too and they help. They don't contribute to the sexy chicken meter because as we know, the YouTube overlords and Susan like to take 30% from the, uh, the super chats. But I appreciate both. Ladies and Oh my goodness, I'm feeling another pit stop coming on. What is wrong with me? That's what happened. Oh, well, that probably explains that one. All right, I'm going to try to... Oh, we're, we're at a crossroads. Let's get through this without having to take that pit stop. This is the cabinet battle that everyone has been excited for, that so many people have been saying. So I'm excited for this one. Are you guys excited? Buckle up. Let's go. Gentlemen. You could have been anywhere in the world tonight, but you're here with us in New York City. Are you H to the is O V to the is A? Not guilty. Y'all got to feel me. Come on now. Ladies and gentlemen. Could have been anywhere in the world right now. But you're here with me. I appreciate that. You know who he's paying homage to, none other than Jay-Z. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen. You could have been anywhere in the Let's world go. tonight, but you're here with us in New York. And obviously, H to the Izzo has a very uh, memorable piano line. Starting off with the piano line on this one, too. No coincidence, people. He's paying homage. Ladies and gentlemen, you could have been anywhere in the world tonight, but you're here with us in New York City. Are you ready for a cabinet meeting? Huh? Feels like ready to rumble. The issue on the table. Secretary Hamilton's plan to assume state debt and establish a national bank. Secretary Jefferson, you have the floor, sir. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fought for these ideals, we shouldn't settle for less. These are wise words, enterprising men quote them. Don't act surprised, you guys, because I wrote them. Ow, but Hamilton. <laughs> Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson, ladies and gentlemen, gave that to us via the Declaration of Independence. Now, it can be hotly debated if he wrote those words because he was very much inspired by the Enlightenment thinkers such as John Locke and other great thinkers along those lines. Uh, those ideas were laid down, and he was a huge uh, student of that and those ideals and the Age of Enlightenment, and he used that throughout his writings. But I do like the flex bars, though. Let's keep it rolling. Hold em, don't act surprised, you guys, because I wrote them. Ow, but Hamilton forgets. His plan would have the government assume state debt. Now place your bets as to who that benefits. The very seat of government where Hamilton sits. Not true. Oh, if the shoe fits, wear it. If New York's in debt, why should Virginia bear it? Uh, our debts are paid, I'm afraid. Don't tax the South, because we got it made in the shade. In Virginia, we plant seeds in the ground. We create. You just want to move our money around. This financial plan is an outrageous demand, and it's too many damn pages for any man to understand. Stand with me. Oh, okay. All right, I just wanted to keep it rolling because I didn't want to lose a vibe, but we'll have to explain some of the bars in that. So obviously, we've got the great debate. Um, Now, knowing history, we know who won this debate, but... Hamilton wanted to assume state debts because that was a big problem at the time. Remember, we didn't exactly have a centralized system of dealing with finance, of uh, you know, backing currency in the mint and the dollar and what have you. Um, states were in debt as a result of the Revolutionary War. Some states were worse off than others. Virginia, I believe at the time, had their debts paid off. A number of northern states didn't. But there were also some states in the South that were struggling with the debt as well. But generally speaking, the South less so in debt, as we know, slavery in the South, plantations in the South, different sources of income in the South versus the more growing and industrializing North. So you have Jefferson, who was very much a liberties man. Ironic for a slave owner, ladies and gentlemen, but a liberties man, nonetheless, preaching these ideals. And with those, that concept that he had, you have the formation of political parties. You have Hamilton in the Federalist Party, right? And what was it? The, Jeffer the Jeffersonian Democratic? Oh, what is the... Oh, come on. Knox flex flexed his history brain. I can't think of the other political party at the time. But Federalist and Hamilton arguing for um, centralized government and strong central government 
still existing in a federal system, but recognizing the need for a strong central government. As we know, the Whiskey Rebellion pointed out, as we know, the Articles of Confederacy revealed the weaknesses and what having a just segregated government and, and all the dangers of that. Jefferson still wanting to protect people, wanting to protect more individualist views. And remember, we had just rebelled from a highly centralized system of rule, the monarchy in England. So there was a lot of distrust and distaste for too much power consolidated with a central governing authority. So now we know which side Jefferson sits on. And I would assume within this cabinet battle that we're going to find out the side that our boy Hamilton sits on. Outrageous demand and it's too many things. Democrat, yeah. I was like, that popped in my head and I was like, hang on, that, that just doesn't sound right. But it was right. They were the Democratic Republicans at the time. Pages for any man. Now, here's, here's the trivia question, though, for you, chat. Democratic Republicans, did they eventually become today's Republican Party? Or loosely, did they eventually become today's Democratic Party? Answer that one. Understand, stand with me in the land of the free. Pray to God we never see Hamilton's candidacy. Look, when Britain taxed our tea, we got frisky. Well, none of us saw Hamilton's candidacy, unfortunately. Pray to God we never see Hamilton's candidacy. Look, when Britain taxed our tea, we got frisky. Imagine what gonna happen when you try to tax our whiskey. Ah. Thank you. See, there it is. And listen, here's another uh, lesser known historical fact. America back then was drunk, drunk. AF. People loved whiskey back then. And see, we didn't have like a, you know, well planned out sewage systems in place, water purification systems. So a lot of times, especially in some of these more rural areas, well, even within the cities themselves, uh, whiskey, because of the alcoholic content in nature, was actually safer to drink and have than good old H2O. So instead of water, people were just chugging back whiskey. Everybody was drunk as shit in that time. What a great time to be alive. <laughs> but Hamilton, recognizing that there could be some potential dangers with that, really wanted to curb the whiskey intake of our nation. Um, so he wanted to place a whiskey tax. Hence Jefferson's bars of, well, we got pissed off with the Boston Tea Party and started, you know, dumping out all the tea cases in Boston Harbor. How do you think the people are going to respond when you tell them you want to tax their good old brown liquor h2o imagine what gonna happen when you try to tax our whiskey thank you secretary jefferson secretary hamilton your response right before hamilton comes in i can't do it i'm sorry i was trying to make it i'll be right back ghost cover cover ground cover ground Whew. That was three. We're on the way to five. Whoever gets five, probably. Secretary Hamilton, your response. Oh. Thomas, that was a real nice declaration. Welcome to the present. We're running a real nation. Would you like to join us? Or staying mellow, doing whatever the hell it is you doing, Monticello. If we assume the debts to you. Oh, it is a real battle. This, this, I love how this is framed. A battle between the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Treasury. And you could see this happening behind closed doors, but set up like an actual MC rap battle. Thomas, love that declaration. Get it? Declaration of Independence, but also the declaration that he made against Hamilton. But Hamilton's like, hey, you know, you've been on the outside looking in for a while now. We live in the real world now, not the idealist world. 
and uh, I'm kind of more of a realist, and we need to figure out how to actually implement some policies to uh, get our nation running and to deal with all this debt and to uh, deal with our financial situation and to make sure that we have a lot of leverage for funding and dealing with everything that's going on in the world right now. Hello, doing whatever the hell it is you doing, Monticello. Whatever, Jefferson being mellow, whatever the hell it is you do up in Monticello. Now, during the Revolutionary War, Jefferson was governor of Virginia for a time. There was critique of Jefferson during the Revolutionary War uh, when Cornwallis was down marching through Virginia and Richmond. Um, and Jefferson wrote a lot of letters and had a lot of complaints because he was struggling to muster troops down there to deal with Cornwallis. And there was even a, ta a point when Cornwallis tried to surprise Jefferson and send troops to Monticello to capture him. But there was this ongoing critique at this time of Jefferson not doing enough to fight the British, being more passive and just being an idealist, not someone getting his hands dirty in a situation. Notice how Hamilton is using similar arguments and rhetoric against Jefferson at this time and not knowing what the hell is going on in Monticello. That could be a reference to that situation. Like, I don't know what you're doing to Monticello because you couldn't raise troops. You couldn't deal with Cornwallis down there. You actually fled from Monticello. Or do we get scandalous? It could be scandalous. Thomas Jefferson had an affair with one of his slaves, so we could be uh, insinuating that. It was a real nice declaration. Welcome to the present. We're running a real nation. Would you like to join us? We're staying mellow, doing whatever the hell it is you do in Monticello. If we assume the debts, the union gets a new line of credit, a fine. Assume the debts, the union gets. Oh, I love that scheme. Monticello. If we assume the debts, the union gets a new line of credit, a financial diuretic. Oh, yeah, that's another. Hang on, let's bring it back. Would you like to join us? We're staying mellow, doing whatever the hell it is you do in Monticello. Ah, uh, or stay mellow could also be maybe he's smoking too much of that tobacco leaf down on his plantation in Monticello. You getting high down there, Thomas? Assume the debts the union gets a new line of credit, a financial diuretic. How do you not get it? If we're aggressive and competitive, the union gets. We just have like diuretic in there, creating that drip, baby. Financial diuretic, how do you not get it? If we're aggressive and competitive, the union gets a boost. You'd rather give it a sedative? A civics lesson from a slaver. Hey, neighbor, your debts are paid because you don't pay for labor. We plant seeds in the South. We create... <sighs> Bars! Hamilton is swinging! Neighbor, your debts are paid because you don't pay for labor. Your debts are paid? Hey, neighbor, because you don't pay for labor? Let's go. Oh, man. Oh, that's the bar of the battle so far. Six lesson from a slaver. Hey, neighbor, your debts are paid because you don't pay for labor. We plant seeds in the South. We create and keep ranting. We know who's really doing the planting. And another thing. We plant seeds in the South. Listen, I love how this is set up because what is a typical rap battle tactic? Take what your opponent says and figure out a way to flip it on. What is Hamilton using in this argument? Taking literally what Jefferson said, him swagging, bragging about, you know, having all their seeds planted, chilling in the shade. And Hamilton's like, hang on, but who planted those seeds? And who's the reason you guys aren't in debt when you don't have to pay for all that labor because you got a bunch of slaves working and doing it on their backs on your plantations. It's easy to speak from that perspective, isn't it? We create and keep ranting. We know who's really doing the planting. And another thing, Mr. Age of Enlightenment. Don't and I love like the, oh, like the, oh shit. It's like, you know, it is like a rap battle, isn't it? And after a good punchline, you've got like a crowd, like in a circle around them, just like building the hype of this. We know who's really doing the planting. And another thing, Mr. Age of Enlightenment, don't lecture me about the war. You didn't fight in it. You think I'm frightened of you, man? We almost died in the trench. Well, you were off getting high with the French. Thomas Ooh. Jefferson always hesitant with the <laughs> Mr. Age of Enlightenment. Again, a lot of Thomas Jefferson's ideals came from great philosophers within the Age of Enlightenment, like John Locke and Newton as well. Trench, well, you were off getting high with the French. And then Jefferson 
off getting high with the French. Wow, we've got two sort of mellow high bars going on here. He likes to smoke his product, doesn't Think he? I'm frightened of you, man. We almost died in the trench. Well, you are off getting high with the French. Thomas Jefferson always hesitant with the president. Medicine, there is in a plan he doesn't jettison. Medicine. Ooh, wow, that rhyme scheme there and that flow switch. Always hesitant with the president. Medicine, there is in a plan he doesn't jettison. Medicine, you mad as a hat, so take your medicine. Madison, you mad as a hat is so take your medicine. Oh, that delivery, people. Oh, and then Jefferson just jettisons everything. Because, Je again, sort of a similar critique that Hamilton has had with Burr, you know, and Burr not getting involved and not taking action, just talking ideas all day. There is in a plan he doesn't jettison. Madison, you mad as a hat is so take your medicine. Damn, you in worse shape than the national dead is in. Sitting there, useless as two shits. Hey, turn around, bend over. I'll show you where my shoe. Excuse me. <laughs> oh. oh, ghosty ghost. Oh, poor ghosty ghost is useless as two shits. The two shits in the building, Thomas Jefferson and Madison. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't, James Madison. Why you got to do him dirty like that? Turn around, he's going to put his boot up that ass. And he did in that battle. Those were some ruthless comebacks. Ding, ding, ding. Knockout round right there, ladies and gentlemen. Antra S, not only bar breakdown, but history lesson too. Thank you, Knox. Hi to Ghost. What's up, Ghost? Ghost, he can't hear. Right. I think he got that pantomime. Thank you so much for the super chat, Antra. Lady Louise and Hamilton, Jefferson and Hamilton are given actual microphones for this cabinet meeting. Oh, that is so dope. Just like doing an actual battle. I love that. Thank you guys for sharing that with me. What else? Sending a shout out to soldiers I influenced to watch while I was deployed. Still listening to the Hamilton every day, willing and able. Five, five, Ryan DeVega. Hey, thank you for your service, man, and your sacrifice for our country. Much love to you, brother. Thank you so much for the super chat as well. Roy Gerbil has super chat. I love your song, Over It, with Locksmith. Super dope. Hey, thank you so much, man. So lucky to get a great MC like Locksmith on the track with me. Absolutely dope. Absolutely dope. Explicit Josh, do you think ERB had a hand in writing this battle? <laughs> no, I don't, actually, because Lynn is talented enough on his own as he has shown and flexed out through his clever lyrics and wordplay, man. Mike Sebastian, fun fact, the cabinet battle is inspired by the Jay-Z Nas beef with Jefferson being precise and clinical and Hamilton being mean and emotional. LMM literally describes Ham's verse as ethering Jefferson. Yeah, but... I don't know, though. I would disagree, and I just did a huge breakdown of that Jay-Z Nas beef. I would feel like uh, Nas was the more clinical one, and Jay-Z was the more sort of emotional, personality-filled one. See? And he had a lot of personality on his disses, and I kind of lean towards Nas and Ether, which has been a consensus, you know, that Nas murdered Jay-Z, whereas in this case, Hamilton is the one that is definitely... R.I.P. Thomas Jefferson. Madison, Jefferson, take a walk. Hamilton, take a walk. We're going to reconvene after a brief recess. Hamilton, sir, a word. You don't have the votes. You don't have the votes. Ha, 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 ha. You're going to need congressional ha, 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 ha. approval and you don't have the votes. Such a blunder, sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. Why he even brings the thunder? Oh, uh, makes me wonder sometimes why you want to take us under. Why you want to take us under? Aha, aha, aha. Can't nobody take my pride. Can't nobody hold me down. Oh, no. Been around the world. Nah, nah, nah. Shout out to Puffy. Shout out to Mace. You want to go even further back than that? Shout out to Grandmaster Flash. Oh, the hip hop homage, baby. I love it. Times it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. Why he even brings the thunder? 
Ah. You wanna pull yourself together? I'm sorry, these Virginians are birds of a fat young man. I'm from Virginia, so mm. watch your mouth. Don't forget, Washington was from Virginia, too. So we let Congress get held hostage by the South? You need the votes. No, we need bold strokes. We need this no, plan. No, you need to convince more. Wait, what was that? You need the votes. No, we need bold strokes. We I like that. No, we need bold strokes. We need to take action now. Need this no, plan. you need to convince more folks. Well, James Madison won't talk to me. That's a non-starter. Ah. Winning was easy, young man. Governing's hard. They're being in transit. That's well said. What a great line from Washington. You know, winning's easy. Governing is harder, and it's so true. You know, it's no longer a battle, even though this was framed as a rap battle. Now, this is this is about politics, and this is about the sticky, messy world that involves politics and policy and enacting change and seeing things through. You have to find a compromise. But they don't have a plan. They just hate mine. Convince them otherwise. And what happens if I don't get congrats? Don't push me, because I'm close to the edge. We're trying not to lose our heads. Approval. I imagine they'll call for your removal. Sir, figure it out, Alexander. That's an order from your commander. Ooh. Ooh. He got stern with him. Washington laid down the hammer. I thought Hamilton was the winner of the battle, but the ultimate winner is GW. Saying, you still got to get the votes if you want to get the government to assume state debts and if you want to centralize the financial system. Oh, we're counting French. My dearest Angelica, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. I trust you'll understand the reference to another Scottish tragedy without my having a name to play. They think me Macbeth. Is he writing Angelica now? Ooh, naughty boy. Ambition is my folly. I'm a polymath. A pain in the ass. A massive pain. Madison is bankrupt. Pain in the ass, but a massive pain. I love just the word flip again. My folly. I'm a polymath. A pain in the ass. A massive pain. Madison is ambition is my folly. I'm a polymath. A pain in the ass. A massive pain. Holly, a what? A what? Ambition is my fault. I've gotten almost all the words, but what's this one? I'm a polymath, a pain in the ass. I'm a poly. Oh, I'm a polymath of pain. Oh, an amalgamation of build up the polyamorous of pain. Come on. Man, get out, get out Merriam-Webster's dictionary for this one. Ambition is my folly. I'm a polymath, a pain in the ass. Massive pain. Madison is Banquo, Jefferson's Macduff, and Burnham Wood is Congress on its way to Dunsany. And there you are an ocean away, do you have to live an ocean away? Thoughts of you subside, then I get another letter, and I cannot put the notion away. Take a break, I'm on my way. There's a little surprise before supper. You're an ocean away, because Angela has gone over to the UK. Ooh, ooh, the love triangle continues. Take a break. I'm on my way. There's a little surprise before supper, and it cannot wait. I'll be there in just a minute. Save my plate. Alexander, okay, okay. your son is nine years old today. He has something he'd like to say. He's been practicing all day. Philip, take it away. Daddy, daddy, look. My name is Philip. I am a poet. Oh, beatbox. I wrote this poem just to show it. And I just turned nine. You can write rhymes, but you can't write mine. What? I practice Ooh. French and play piano with my mother. Uh -huh. I have a sister, but I want a little brother. Okay. That's Angela. It's Angelica. Sorry. Um, brain's getting broke. Daddy's trying to start America's bank. Bravo. Take a break. Hey, our kid is pretty great. Run away with us for the summer. Let's go upstate. I've got so much on my plate. Wait, what? Eliza's the one beatboxing here? Oh, that's that's crazy good. The summer, let's go up that's stay. amazing. Eliza, I've got so much on my plate. We can all go stay with my father. There's a lake I know. I know. In a nearby park. I'd love to go. You and I can go when the night gets dark. I will try to. Again, Eliza, the actress playing Eliza, just the purity in that singing, man. I, I could listen to her all day. 
My dearest Alexander, you must get through to Jefferson. Sit down with him and compromise. Don't stop till you agree. Your favorite older sister, Angelica, reminds you there's someone in your corner all the way across the sea. In a letter I received from you two weeks ago, I noticed a comma in the middle of a phrase. It changed the meaning. Did you intend this? One stroke and you've consumed my waking days. It says, My dearest Angelica. With the comma after dearest, you've written my, my dearest Angelica. Anyway, all this to say, I'm coming home this summer. I'm oh dear. Oh dear, the plot thickens. Just as invitation, I'll be there with your family if you make your way upstate. Right, so my dearest, that's obviously going to turn some heads because Eliza should be his dearest. Not just like when you normally write a letter. And it could be because Angelica is his sister-in-law, so he would just be saying, like, my dearest Angelica, right? Which is more socially acceptable versus my dearest, comma, space. That changes the connotation behind that because he's calling Angelica his dearest when Eliza should be his dearest. Clever wordplay on that. I know you're very busy. I know your work's important. But I'm crossing the ocean and I just can't wait. You won't be an ocean away. You will only be a moment away. Downstairs, Angelica's arriving today. <laughs> Angelica, Eliza, the Skyler sisters, Alexander. Hi. It's good to see your face. Hi. I love that. Alexander. Hi. It's good to see your face. Angelica, tell this man, John Adams spends the summer with his family. Angelica, tell my wife, John Adams doesn't have a real job anyway. You're not Ugh. joining us, wait. I'm afraid I cannot join you upstate. Alexander, I came all this way. She came all this way. All this way. Take, Take a break. break. You know I have to get my plan through Congress. Away with us for the summer, let's go upstate. My job if we don't get this plan through Congress. All the stay with our father. There's a lake I know. All is your way. Bye. For all your cars and a sticky plate. Guy can go. I try. Take a break. Get away. Run away with us. For the summer, let's go up stay. Where we can stay. Wow. I mean, <sighs> these. The, the power. Cores and, and the notes of this man. This is oh. I have to get my plan through Congress. I can't stop till I get this plan through Congress. Oh, love the strings right there. Hamilton obviously talking about his financial plan. Well, everybody was telling me to uh, take a pee break there. I mean, the song was telling me to do one, but I've already done it, and I'm good right now. Thank you, though, everyone. So, Hamilton, obviously, we talk about balances in life and what matters and what's important. And me knowing what happens to Hamilton's son, uh, I feel like there's some foreshadowing happening there. Because, you know, Hamilton was definitely a workaholic. I mean, it was exemplified when he dropped 51 essays defending the Constitution. The man just, you know, he, he wanted to leave his mark and his impression on history. He was incredibly ambitious. But, you know, we all have to figure out where our balancing point is in life between our family and our work. That's for certain. Mark Sprague. The roles are actually flip here. Angel Angelica was the one that wrote the letter. And it said, my dearest, comma, Alexander. Ooh, interesting to know. Thanks for sharing that and for the super chat. Melissa Mello, hey, thank you so much for the super chat donation. Explicit Josh, not long, finished my 12-hour shift. Should probably go to bed, but this is too good. I agree. Team No Sleep in the building, people. Say no to this is next up. I feel like we can free ghosts. I almost tripped on a wire there. All right, this is Say No to This. 
There's nothing like summer in the Ooh, that's a bit ominous. The chord, the minor chords that was played in. Ooh. There's nothing like summer in the city. Someone under stress meets someone looking pretty. There's trouble in the air, you can smell it. And Alexander's by himself. I'll let him tell it. Who was that? Who was the narrator there? Was that Burr? Xander's by himself. I'll let him tell it. What? Uh, shout out to Edija Watts, who super chatted a dollar. Thank you so much. Shout out to our girl, Kiara, who said, Don't free ghost headphones for this. What? Don't be silly. Ghost just got freed. I hadn't slept in a week. I was weak. I was awake. You've never seen a bass. Oh, nice play on weak. W E E K, but also being weak. W E A K. And if you don't get enough sleep, yeah, less inhibition control. I hadn't slept in a week. I was weak. I was awake. You've never seen a bastard orphan more in need of a break. Longing for Angelica, missing my wife. That's when Miss Mariah Reynolds. Oh, longing for Angelica, and then missing my wife as well. <laughs> break oh, God. Longing for Angelica, missing my wife. That's when Miss Mariah Reynolds walked into my life. She said, I know you are a man of honor. I'm so sorry to bother you at home, but I don't know where to go. And I came here all along. She said, My husband. That sounds dangerous. Do me wrong, beat me, cheating me, mistreating me. Suddenly he's up and gone. I don't have the means to go on. So I offered her a loan. I offered to walk her home. She said, You're too kind, sir. I gave her 30 bucks that I had socked away. She lived a block away. She said, This one's mine, sir. Then I said, Well, I should head back home. She turned red. She led me to a bed. Let her legs spread and said, Stay. Hey. Hey. That's when I began to pray. Lord, show me how to say no. <laughs> Well, I can no longer tell ghosts that babies are delivered by the stork. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Kiara said I warned you. Oh, I didn't know we were going there. I thought maybe we'd just get like a bad curse word, you know? <clears throat> oh, you sweet temptress. Oh, this is where we get the Reynolds papers, don't we? And um, what was her first name? I can't remember. I'm having a brain break because I just exposed goes to that. But uh, this is obviously good old Hamilton's big affair, which ultimately cost him the presidency of the United States of America. Um, I didn't know this is where we were going, but I should have seen the writing on the wall when Angelica and Eliza were going away on summer holiday and good old Hamilton was left in NYC. Mariah. Yeah, I know another Mariah that had a scandalous relationship that a rapper got upset with her about and dissed her over. Whew. Okay, well, uh, just trying to figure out how I'm going to process this one with Ghost later when we talk about the uh, the birds and the bees. I mean, that was... Uh, that was that was descriptive. That was why did I do that motion? Same motion as her legs. That was a Freudian slip. Lady Louise, this is my first time reacting to your live since I found you a week ago and ended up watching your vids for twelve hours straight. Love your content. Can't wait to see what you react to next. Thank you so much for the super chat donation. Thank you for being here. Uh Devonte Rivera, I missed this one, said earmuffs now. Uh, sorry about that. We definitely missed that one. 
the rookie critic said, hey, Knox, I made a compilation of your subscribe and you get a free blank. Your fans might enjoy that, LOL. It's on the Fandom Collective channel. That's really cool. If you guys want to see a compilation of all the subscribe things that I make up randomly while filming a video, uh, it's now been compiled. That could be pretty entertaining. Uh, Joe Reuter, ghosts about to learn about the birds and the beasts. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Thank you guys for all of the, uh, the super chats. Whew, is it hot in here? Things happen. This I don't know how to say no to this. But my God, she looks so helpless. Everybody's saying hell yes. No, show me how to say no to this. I don't know how to say no to this. In my mind, I'm trying to go. Then her mouth is on mine, and I don't say no. He's even got the harp in the mix now. It's just Cupid is shooting his shot. How he's thinking that too. Kenny P Music said, just say no, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's kind of the obvious answer, isn't it? Just say no. <laughs> I wish I could say that was the last time. I said that last time. It became a pastime. A month into this endeavor, I received a letter from a Mr. James Reynolds. Even better, it said. Dear sir, I hope this letter finds you in good health and in a prosperous enough position to put wealth in the pockets of people like me down on their luck. You see, that was my wife who decided to fall. Uh-oh, you made the wrong sucker a cut <laughs> code. So time to pay the piper. Is that the first time we've had the, uh, no, we had the F-bomb drop once before. So that's the second F-bomb that we've had dropped in this. And what perfect timing and delivery of that. Fuck my life right now. But also the double entendre with the F-U-C-K because of the thing that we expose the uh, ghost to. The spreading of the birds and the bees' legs. Uh-oh, you made the wrong sucker. Actually, does he say the C-K? I don't think he does. I think he just tails it off with fuck. And we kind of fill in the blanks. That was my wife who decided to fuck. Uh-oh, you made the wrong sucker. Uh. Cut coat. So time to pay the piper for the pants you want. Buckle. And hey, you can keep seeing my whole wife if the price is right. If not, I'm telling you your wife. I hit the letter and I race to a place. Wow. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, caught you doing this and having an affair with my wife but uh, you can keep doing her it's cool that's fine just pay me what in the prostitution is happening I put you in the face she said no sir I dressed apologetic a mess she looked pathetic she cried please don't go sir so what's your full story you said I don't know about any letters stop crying god damn it get up I didn't know any better I am ruined please don't leave me I am helpless. helpless how could I do just this just give him what he wants and you Just say no, bro. Just say no. It's not that hard. And no. Hey, we just hit sexy chicken time. I know it sounds like I am uh, condoning an affair right now, which is just going to could totally be clipped and taken out of context. But actually, uh, I was fist pumping because shout out to Mark Sprague. Shout out to Elena Humphreys. Both of you for the direct donations for helping us to hit sexy chicken time which means you guys will get another freestyle but we will finish to say no to this before we do this quick freestyle and then we, we will continue on this hamilton journey my dude mr reynolds is pimping out his wife right now hey. the situation's helpless hey. and the body's screaming hey. hell yes hey. no hey. Us. oh hence the play on helpless remember we had a song Feeling helpless. Different connotation this time around, though. No to this. How can I say no to this? There is nowhere I can go. Go, go, go. When her body's on mine, I do not. There's nowhere I can go. Go, go, go. And then you had that before the go, go, go. When it was his internal dialogue when he should have left the situation in the first place. Hey, no. yes. So? 
nobody needs to know. Wow. I mean, that is the affair. And this affair is, is huge, right? Um, because it leads to the publication of the Reynolds Papers. And basically, Alexander Hamilton just goes kamikaze on his own political career. Uh, because our boy who's pimping out his wife right now is actually a giant conman. And uh, when he was arrested for speculation at the time... Uh, he insinuated and told his jailers that uh, it was all a Ponzi scheme. It was all a scheme, and it was directed by Hamilton, um, which gave Jefferson and Madison and Hamilton's enemies, men in government, ammunition to go after Hamilton. And, and Jefferson carried on this just bitter rivalry in trying to prove that Hamilton was crooked and dirty for basically the rest of his political career. I mean, once he came into office, I mean, he had an investigation launched on Hamilton. They didn't actually find anything, but that's ultimately why Hamilton had to throw down a grenade and blow everything up because, yeah, he just went full m and mode, like in a battle, basically, and just took everything you could say and diss him with and just wore that shit and owned it like armor um, and just blew up the affair and blew up this whole situation that was happening. But his argument was, look, man, I'm not, I'm not dirty. But, uh, I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kenny B Music, uh, we have the quote of 2022 from me so far. If, uh, if there was one strap line that would describe this channel and the breakdowns that we give you, it is, what in the prostitution is happening? That is from Knox Hill. Uh, that will be my presidential campaign slogan for 2028, so watch this space. Ariana, don't know if it means much, but I would like to point out that in Helpless, Hamilton does not say helpless at all. It is only Eliza. But during Say No to This with Maria, he says helpless every time. Ooh, no, that does mean something. That is a great point. Well done, you, Ariana. Well done on that one. What else do we got to do? Uh, yeah, room where it happens, people. Listen, uh, quick freestyle time. I'll, I'll do half of the freestyle. I won't do the full... Freestyle, because we're kind of in the zone on this. So I'll do half a freestyle for you guys, methinks. Just comment some words quickly, all right? Comment words right now in chat. Comment words. Go. Get those words going in chat, because I will freestyle live to the words that you say. And then we're going to dive right back into this. We're going to hit this. All right, last dono. It's 4 a.m. I really need to sleep. Enjoy the room where it happens. One of the big standing ovation songs of the show. Oh, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Chat's going at a hundred miles an hour. I'm raining when his brain showers like nuclear showers. Got the outlet on this mic. I'm the power. One hand up to the sky. Feel it and I'm fly like a 757. Here we go. Sky high like Jefferson smoking that tobacco down in Monticello. Cool fellow feeling mellow. Here we go. Knox Hill riding on the strings and the cellos. It gets better through the weather. Understand I am so clever. Got flames like a dragon. Dragging in, here we go, motherfucker, get the wagon, I'm wheeling them Y'all can never keep up with my mind, spinning like a tornado Leave you blood red like a tomato Never keep up with me, I am far away though Feeling like, this the best, this my time I got that S on my chest every time that I step up in the booth Got the devil dancing up on the roof and it's so hot Never stop till I take it up to the top but even angels sin, ask Lucifer. Yeah, devil on my soda, I ain't stopping till I'm loose of her. Life is like a blur. Everything I spit is so absurd. Got my mind in the clouds. Shackles out the sunny, but I'm never coming down. Shackles out the Seth. Wants me to talk about the birds and the bees And what's in between girls when they spreading out their knees Oh please, ghost needs the headphones on and I need to stop Or else I got an awkward conversation that I really need to carry on Never stopping, this is that nighttime grind You know what I'm saying? It's that one two and we bump into the break of dawn Spring back, fall forward can never keep up with me every time that I record Every time I get up in my zone And I flip it and I send it like Carmelo Till I take it back home Man, goddamn, Uncle Sam need a plan Trying to tax me and all the things up in my mind Feel the ill designs Feeling all these rhymes that I do When I'm back up in the zone I just move and I keep it so cool Riding like the rim still spinning 
Never take an L, smoke that shit up and we keep on winning Dining on these motherfuckers, I'm a fucking vandal Like Alexander Hamilton, trapped up in this scandal It's scandalous, it's vandalous Every time that I get up on the mic, you can't handle this You can never take care of me, cause I'm otherworldly I am flying out in Mars as I loop around the stars I keep shining, keep blinding Keep up on the mic and I keep grinding Yeah Four leaf clover cause I feel like I'm Lucky with my life and I'm getting that luck But my life's like a virgin cause I never gave a fuck You could fill in that CK while I give them KC me And I'm back on the track and it's A-OK Like the A1 sauce when I get it I'm a motherfucking boss and I never stop This is that best, this is that success This is that best that I wear Never penetrating like a bulletproof vest Yes! Zombies in Abercrombie telling me how I should be Trying to put me in this box but I'm never living in it I am different, I am Amazon at my prom Heating up like cutting down trees in the Amazon But still I get my shine, global warming's in effect Mr. Frazier, yes I am the best Swinging and I knock him down like Frazier Hi haters, you can feel the vapors You can feel me when I'm famous Every single night I'ma show you what the day is When I spray it, killing these sons Never riding, never stopping. My delivery is impeccable. I'm eating through these beats like a vegetable. While well, some pray, I pray for them while I pray on them, yes. Lying on me while I'm stalking in the dishes. Motherfucker, I am vicious when I'm coming through with it. And it's so sweet, like a sugar head rush till I bust. It's dangerous. Every single ball with my facade, I'm a god, but I'm playing Pokemon Cause I gotta catch them all with the balls And it's so hell yes, and it's so never stopping Even on the beach, sometimes I feel depressed But this is my outlet when I doubt shit When the clouds surround and I'm feeling down I just pick up the mic and start swinging with this fight Never stop until I see my way through the nights Like I'm playing chess, I'm a king with my queen in this world but i'm feeling like a pawn feeling like everything that i do is about to blow like i'm dropping bombs running my city like a marathon but i'm flowing like an otter through the clear water know that it gets harder but i'm never stopping this is hip-hop topics 101 classes in session professor knox is giving you the best kid let's go all right i said i was gonna do a quick one but i didn't but i hope you guys enjoyed that live freestyle to your topics that was sexy chicken time this is the room where it happens let's go ah mr secretary mr burr sir and did you hear the news about good old general mercer no you know claremont street here we go again burr sir aaron burr sir the recurring theme throughout man i love that easter egg it never gets old burr. and did you hear the news about good old general mercer no you know claremont street yeah can we can we have a quick talk before i get into this one moment that i was proud of that i will pat myself on the back was playing off of that f and then the way that i flipped the uh, the ck and i'm giving you kc did you hear the news about good old general mercer no you know claremont street yeah they renamed it after him the mercer legacy is secure sure and all he had to do was die yeah, that's a lot less work what is that general mercer general mercer is not very well known he wasn't even a very successful general was he all he had to do was die oh here we go see the greater theme to this is talking about legacies and what is the legacy that we leave and what is Aaron Burr and what is the legacy that he wants to leave and what is Hamilton the legacy that he wants to leave and ultimately that is a recurring theme throughout this play shout out to Kathleen thank you so much for the hand clap legacy is secure sure and all he had to do was die yeah, that's a lot less work we ought to give it a try <laughs> now how you going to get the <laughs> death plan through I guess I'm Ooh, all we have to do is die. Could that be foreshadowing as well? Because we know the ghastly end that Hamilton meets. We ought to give it a try. <laughs> now how you going to get your debt plan through? I guess I'm going to finally have to listen to you. Really? Talk less. Smile more. <laughs> do whatever it takes. Oh, is he trolling Hamilton? Or is he actually realizing that maybe he's got to play the game a little bit too to get his politics through? I love how we're relating to when he first met 
Burr, and Burr gave him that very same advice. Talk less and smile more. Smile more. <laughs> Do whatever it takes to get my plan on the Congress floor. The Madison and Jefferson are merciless. Well, hate the sin, love the sinner. Hamilton. I'm sorry, Burr, I got... Love that line. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. Could that mean the sin that he is committing and the sin that he just committed back on say no to this, but love him, the sinner, or the sin that he knows he's going to commit? Or could that be playing on them? I'm not sure. Like the sin of, of having to get in bed with your enemies, of having to go through that. But, you know, do the ends justify the means, so to speak? Well, hate the sin, love the sinner. Hamilton. I'm sorry, Burr, I gotta go. But decisions are happening over dinner. Dun, 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 dun. I love the brass there. Holy hell, Batman. Happening over dinner. Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hey, you know, like the joke, like two whatever and, and this walk into a bar. Well, in this case, two Virginians and an immigrant, the immigrant being Alexander Hamilton. They're diametrically opposed. Happening over dinner. Oh, my God. The dinner table compromise. Oh, we know where we're going with this. The compromise of 1790 in the building. They oh. emerge with the compromise, having open doors that were previously closed. Bros. The immigrant emerges with unprecedented financial power, a system he can shape however he wants. The Virginians emerge with the nation's capital. And here's the piece de resistance. No one else was in the Right. This is this is key. This compromise right here, which did happen over dinner, apparently. And Hamilton wanting to get the assumption of state debts, wanting to strengthen the financial authority and create, you know, a national bank, a federal bank for us, and everything that came with his policies, right? The financial power of America. And what happened was he came to a compromise because a lot of people wanted the capital in New York, where a lot of meetings and where the government was currently being held. A lot of people wanted it in Philly. Philadelphia was highly touted. And what they agreed upon was for it to be on the Potomac. Now, a lot of people don't appreciate it. We think that, oh, they agreed the exact spot of Washington, D.C. No, it was George Washington who decided where on the Potomac the capital was going to sit down near the border between Maryland and Virginia, as we know today as Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. But that was the compromise that was given. Instead of it being north, the Virginians got it closer to their home. So they took the nation's capital in exchange for Alexander Hamilton's monetary policy. Knox is going on number four. <laughs> what is wrong? I'm too excited. I'm giving you guys a lot of energy. I'm doing a lot of talking. I got to keep drinking water so I don't lose my voice. So I hope you appreciate it. I love you guys. I'm coming. Ooh. Man, this is a ride. Financial power, a system he can shape however he wants. The Virginians emerge with the nation's capital. And here's the piece de resistance. No one else was in the piece de resistance. I love again we have the play on French. Piece. Piece is room in French, isn't it? The room where it happens? Is Lynn getting very clever on us with his writing? With the nation's capital, and here's the piece de resistance. No one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No 
one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No one really knows how the game is played. The art of the trade, how the sausage is made. Huh. Just assume that. Oh, the saying, no one knows how the sausage is made. Like, you don't want to know. You don't want to see that butchery process. And you don't want to see the dirtier side and the compromising and the wheeling and dealing side of politics. We just want to see the policy at the end of it. It happens. But no one else is in the room where it happens. Thomas. Why does that brass make me think of, like, villain music? Is in the room where it happens. Alexander was on Washington's doorstep one day in distress and disarray. Thomas claims Alexander said, I've nowhere else to turn. And basically begged me to join the fray. Thomas claims I approached Madison and said, I know you hate him, but let's hear what he has to say. Thomas claims Well, I arranged the meeting. I arranged the menu, the venue, the seating. But no one I else was in the I arranged the menu, the venue, the seating. Thomas Jefferson. Listen, another thing while we know. While we talk of Jefferson, little known facts of Jefferson, uh, I do find it ironic how we negotiate a deal, how to deal with debt in our budget when Jefferson did spend his most of his life like on the borderline of debt. Uh, because listen, the, the man liked extravagance. You know, he liked to go out, and he was a big fan of. He was a foodie. Like he loved to go out to different restaurants and eat and have big meals with guests and order a bunch of bottles of wine and be highly extravagant with things. So hence why Jefferson here being very braggadocious about whining and dining, not uh, bragging about the actual policy and what was agreed upon and some of the huge monumental things that were decided in this compromise. No, Jefferson's focus is on the, uh, you know, him being a great host and the wine and dine factor and I mean, I, I don't know why you would brag about the seating of, uh, what, where Hamilton and Madison are going to sit in relation to you? I'm, man, I'm telling you that brass bothers me. Where it happens. Meanwhile, Madison is grappling with the fact that not every issue can be settled by committee. Meanwhile, oh, Madison grappling with the fact that not every issue can be settled by committee. And this this ties in again with our constitutional republic as we know it and appreciate it today and distrust of majority rule and the consensus of the majority of, of democracy sometimes and Madison very much concerned with individual rights and liberty and how do we protect the minority in some cases. Again, ironic from these boys because they're also slave owners and plantation owners. Happening with the fact that not every issue can be settled by committee. Meanwhile, Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. It isn't pretty. Then Jefferson approaches with the dinner and invite to Madison. Wait, wait, hang on. It isn't. Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. It is a wow. There was a lot of different cities shouted out at once. I think I heard New York and Philly in there. Meanwhile, Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. It is a oh man, it's so hard to make them out. Jefferson approaches with the dinner and invite, and Madison responds with Virginian insight. Maybe we can solve one problem with another and win the victory for the Southerners. In other words, oh, oh. a quid pro quo. I suppose. Wouldn't you like to work a little closer to home? Actually, I would. Well, I propose the Potomac. And you'll provide him his vote. Well, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. No. What else was in the room? Hey, the appeal of working from home. But again, uh, in their minds, it was very important to have, you know, the the symbol of our nation be closer to them in Virginia. And that was a big win in their eyes. Click, click, boom. Click, boom, and it happened. I love how they clicked right there to play off of that. And no one else has in the room where it happened. Alexander Hamilton. What did they say to you to get you to sell New York City down the river? Alexander Hamilton. Did Washington know about the dinner? Was there presidential pressure to deliver? Alex 
to sell your city down the river, literally down the Potomac River, but also like selling someone down the river. So critique of Hamilton and taking away the capital from NYC in New York City. Ooh. Did you know even then it doesn't matter where you put the U.S. capital? Cause we'll have the banks, we're in the same spot. You got more than you gave. And I wanted what I got when you got skin in the- Got more than you gave and I wanted what I got. Oh, I love the word flip on the got right there. But also, great points being made. Because where is the financial center of the United States still to this day, ladies and gentlemen? NYC. Wall Street, come on now. The same spot. You got more than you gave. And I wanted what I got. When you got skin in the game, you stay in the game. But you don't get a win unless you play in the game. Oh, the villain music is playing alongside Hamilton now. You got skin in the game, you stay in the game. But you don't get a win unless you play in the game. Oh, you get love for it. You get hate for it. You get nothing if you wait for it, wait for it, wait. Wait for it, wait for it, oh, wait for it again, back to Burr, waiting for it, I'm not throwing away my shot, oh. Forgive me, I wanna build something that's gonna outlive me. What do you want, Burr? What do you want, Burr? If you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you fall for? There's that famous line again, if you stand for nothing, what do you fall for? Again, the critique of Burr that we heard earlier in Hamilton. What do you want, Burr? If you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you fall for? I love how everything just boom hits one last big percussive hit and then what happens we call them just little string plucks right just little slight string plucks just boom 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 almost teasing almost dropping everything down total mood change here I, I want to be in the room where it happens the room where it happens I Wanna be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. I wanna be in the room where it happens. I wanna be in the room where it happens. Bit of that scat, a little bit of that blues, that jazz influence introduced. I just miss really good singing from Burr. Nice. Saying what they trade away. We dream of a brand new start. But we dream in the dark for the most part. Dark as a tomb where it happens. I've got to be in the room. Oh, I've got to be. Oh, here we go. I've got to be. Yeah. I've got to be in the room. Oh, that piano, all oh, the jazz. Click boom as well. We got a little bit of foreshadowing, methinks, because we know the ultimate click boom that it gives to Hamilton. And wow, wow, a lot, a lot within that one. A lot of interesting turning points. I think what's most interesting is we talked earlier about the sort of the arcs, the character arcs of, of Hamilton and Burr, and they really come to light here. And what's interesting is that you have a bit of a role change, right? You have Hamilton who before had a big critique of Burr, of, of you know, not sort of standing for something, not wearing his heart on his sleeve, right? And in this case, Hamilton didn't all the way stand for what he believed in because he did some wheeling and dealing. And this time he made some compromises in order to get the job done. And he played that dirty game of politics. And he justified it with the ends. And he used the ends to justify the means. Something that he would very much critique Burr of doing throughout his career. So isn't it interesting that in this case, Hamilton, and he reflected it before when they were singing together and they had kind of some shared views that maybe he should, you know, smile more and talk less versus Burr, right? Burr kind of flipping into the Hamilton role 
wanting to be in the room where it happens. Finally, really showing his ambition, showing the mark that he wants to leave, and even calling out Hamilton, you know, someone who doesn't normally call people out, right? Who sits back and waits for the dust to settle. Calling out Hamilton at first, like, you sold us downriver. What are you doing? You're selling out the city of New York. You're selling everyone out to a bunch of plantation owners down in Virginia. Wow, what a what a change there. And I think that change was really marked. And remember when I talked about how menacing and villainous that the, the brass sounded, right? Burn, burn, burn. And then that brass wasn't used for Hamilton. But then when things changed and Hamilton got the deal done, that little villainous brass music and those notes were used for Hamilton. What a great way to kind of color in characters. And I do like that when you write stories and you and you have plots. And obviously it's not fully writing a story because this is based on history. But, you know, we're all human. We all have light and dark within us all. We all have light sides. We all have shades. We all have shadows. Um, and, you know... Not lifting up Hamilton as this perfect shining angel, showing some of the darker sides, but also showing some of the light to Burr and some of the better sides to Burr. Oh, man, what a switch up. And the play on the room where it happens, room where it happened, where the great compromise happened that gave us Washington, D.C. and the location of our nation's capital and also our monetary and fiscal policy, but also Burr wanting to be in that room now and wanting to be a part of it. That was a ride. Let's shout out some people real quick. Dale Mitchell, I'm happy to finally be able to give a super chat live. Hey, thank you so much, Dale. You've been inspiring me, Knox, and Blacklist is a classic in the making. Ooh, amazing words. Humbled by that, man. Thank you for sharing your energy and your love for the world of hip-hop. Indeed. Thanks for being here, Dale. I really appreciate those words, man. Katrina Forrest, click boom as Burr is narrating, foreshadowing. Yes. Yes. Same wavelength right here. Jeremy Eli, hey Knox, sorry I'm late, and can you please do a live review of me against the world by Tupac one day? I'm definitely going to do a live of Tupac versus Biggie one day, homie. Uh, that's definitely in the cards. But we can look to do that song another day. Thank you so much as always, Jeremy. Good to see you, brother. Probably the best I want song in all of storytelling. That is from Kiara, who's also been just a super chat hero today. Thank you so much, Kiara, and I think you're right. That was a really impressive song. What I love is just the eclectic influences. You know, the orchestral sounds like we talked about, some of the rises, the jazz feel to it, just the blend sort of of different genres all in one fusion. That was awesome. Matt Harris, can't wait for this to be one video. Got to watch both of them together. Keep up the good work, Knox. Hey, thank you so much, Matt. Thanks for being here, brother. Jortless, big fan for a while. First time catching a reaction live. I love Blacklist, especially Checkmate. Keep rocking, Knox. Thank you so much, Jortless. Kathleen, just super chat of $5, clapping her hands. I think that that was for the freestyle. Thank you so much, Kathleen. I really appreciate it. All right. There we go. All right. On to the next one, people. Let's keep it rolling. Look, Grandpa's in the paper. War hero Philip Schuyler loses Senate seat to young upstart Aaron Burr. Grandpa just lost his seat in the Senate. Sometimes that's how it goes. Daddy's gonna find out any minute. I'm sure he already knows. Further down, further, further down, down, let's meet the newest senator from New England. Oh, further down, further down. Oh, again playing off of melodies that have been used in earlier songs. Further down, further down, let's meet the newest senator from New York. New York, our senator. Burr? Since when are you a Democratic Republican? Since being one put me on the up and up again. Whoa. No one knows who you are or what you do. They don't need to know me, they don't like you. Excuse Old me? Wall Street thinks you're great. You'll always be adored by the things you create, but upstate, Wait. people think you're crooked. The scholar seat was up for grabs, so I took it. I've always considered you a friend. I don't see why that has to end. You change parties to run. I love how this is like passive aggressive right here, isn't it? Like it's so lighthearted with just the tune and the nature of it all. But really, this is this is deeper and darker. Against my father-in-law. I changed parties to seize the opportunity I saw. I swear your pride will be the death of us all. Beware, it goeth before the fall. Your pride will be the death of us all. Beware, pride goeth before the fall. Wow. Now we have the great schism between Hamilton and Burr. 
And this is definitely a turning point when Burr decides to change political parties and go over to Jefferson's party and leave Hamilton's Federalist Party. Oh, goodness gracious, team. The issue on the table. France is on the... Burr has definitely, this is a huge turning point, isn't it? Very big turning point. Also, people, people, we got cabinet battle number two, and you guys love the cabinet battle, so let's keep it going. ...of war with England. Now, do we provide aid and troops to our French allies, or do we stay out of it? Remember, my decision on this matter is not subject to congressional approval. The only person you have to convince is me. Secretary Jefferson, you have the floor, sir. When we were on death's door when we were needy, we made a promise. We signed a treaty. We needed money and guns and half a chance. Uh, who provided those funds? France. In return, they didn't have <laughs> I love it. That's just way off to the side of the mix. Uh, France. Duh. You could, you could fill in the blanks on that one. Guns and half a chance. Uh, who provided those funds? France. In return, they didn't ask for land. Only a promise that we'd lend a hand and stand with them. Uh, I, I, yeah, actually, uh, Mr. Jefferson, in all due respect, Mr. President, um, France did kind of ask for land because uh, Louisiana, you know, in that area, the Louisiana Territory, they wanted to make sure that that was secured and, and theirs. So they, mm, okay, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. In return, they didn't ask for land. Only a promise that we'd lend a hand and stand with them if they fought against. Stand, lend a hand and stand with them. I love how he bends that in. See, because lend rhymes with them, hand, stand rhymes. So that's another example, right, where you go A, B, B, back to A, and just fit that within the rhyme scheme. Land, only a promise that we'd lend a hand and stand with them if they fought against oppressors. And revolution is messy, but now is the time to stand. Stand with nice. our brothers as they fight against tyranny. I know that Alexander Hamilton is here, and he would rather not have this debate. I'll remind you that he is not Secretary of State. He knows nothing of loyalty. Smells like new money, dresses like fake royalty. Desperate to rise above his station. Everything he does betrays the ideals of our nation. I love that. Like, critique the way that he dresses, the way that he looks, because it applies to them. But also, what's another technique in a rap battle? You know, make fun of your opponent's appearance. You know, make fun of what they do. Discredit their character. And that's exactly what Jefferson is doing right here. Painting Hamilton as this, you know, opportunist, really, in the situation. Desperate to rise above his station. Everything he does betrays the ideals of our nation. Hey, and if you don't know, now you know, Mr. President. And if you don't know, now you know. Come on. Oh, he loves paying homage to Big, doesn't he? Hey, and if you don't know, now you know, Mr. Love Mr. President. Thank you, Secretary Jefferson. Secretary Hamilton. Here we go. Come on. Uh -huh. You must be out of your goddamn mind if you think the president is gonna bring the nation to the brink of meddling in the middle of a military mess, a game of chess where France is queen and kingless. Who signed a treaty with a king? A game of chess where France. Hey God, hey God, hey God, that is great wordplay. Military mess, a game of chess where France is queen and kingless. Who signed a treaty with a Right, France is queen and kingless. You're not going to play chess if you don't have the king because the game is over. Get it? And literally at this time, the revolution is happening in France. The king has been yeah, decapitated. And uh, it just, it, it ain't pretty. It's a bloody mess in France. Of a military mess, a game of chess where France is queen and kingless. Who signed a treaty with a king whose head is now in a... Uh, Zakiah Fitzgerald asked if it was live. No, Zakiah, this is a recording and I am a robot. Hello from the future. It's a game of chess where France is queen and kingless. Who signed a treaty with a king whose head is now in a basket? Would you like to take it out and ask it? Or should we honor our treaty, King Louis' head? Uh, do whatever you want. I'm super dead. Enough. <laughs> Enough. Oh, I love just the the oozing sarcasm with that delivery. Should we go ask the king? So here you go. Let's just quickly summarize uh, TJ's points here. All TJ, obviously, he's got ties with France. He was once the ambassador of France, influenced by a lot of French thinkers. Francophile. His argument is, look, we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for France. And it's not like they asked for much, right? Now it is their revolution and their time of need. And Jefferson being the idealist, you know, he thought very strongly and passionately that we should support revolutions, especially revolutions, you know, with connotations of freedom and rights and individual liberty and other sort of democratic style revolutions. And uh, Hamilton, 
and his response is that, you know, these terms that we once agreed with, let's be a little bit more pragmatic in how we deal with this. The, the terms in the agreement was when France was a totally different system of government. You know, we agreed to this with the king of France and the monarchy. Well, the monarchy doesn't exist anymore. So are we in obligation to fulfill this? Right? Two different approaches to a situation. Politics. Cabinet battles. Let's get it. A treaty King Louis head. Uh, do whatever you want. I'm super dead. That's enough. Enough. Is. Hamilton is right. Mr. President. We're too fragile to start another fight. But, sir, do we not fight for freedom? Sure, when the French figure out who's going to lead them. The people Ooh. are leading. The people are rioting. When the French figure out who's going to lead them. Isn't this very different, though? Isn't this very different from Hamilton? Who's he sounding like here? He's sounding like Burr. See the character change? Oh, this is good, right? Let's let's wait until the cards fall. And then let's go get involved, you know, afterwards. Doesn't sound like the revolutionary Alexander Hamilton that wanted to free our nation from British oppression in the first place. Sure, when the French figure out who's going to lead them. The people are leading. The people are rioting. There's a difference. Frankly, it's a little disquieting. You would let your ideals blind you to reality. Hamilton, sir, draft a statement of neutrality. Did you forget Lafayette? Oh, I thought that was Hamilton. Is that Washington? And sir, drop the statement of neutrality. Ah. Did you forget Lafayette? What? Have you an ounce of regret? You accumulate debt, you accumulate power, yet in their hour of need you forget. Lafayette's a smart man, he'll be fine. And before he was your friend, he was mine. If we try to fight in every revolution in the world, we never stop. Where do we draw the line? So quick-witted. Alas, I admit it. I bet you were quite a lawyer. My defendants got acquitted. Yeah. Ooh. Someone ought to remind you. What? You're nothing without Washington behind you. Hamilton. <gasps> Daddy's calling. <laughs> naughty, naughty, naughty. Oh, wow. Oh, there's a lot to unpack with those last lines, isn't there? Daddy's calling, Washington's behind you, right? And that's going to burn even more knowing that Hamilton is an orphan, right? So he's saying Hamilton doesn't do anything without his backing from good old daddy, George Washington. Also, there could be another connotation there with GW being behind him, dictating policy. Is that too far for me? It might have been. Um, also, also, the Lafayette bars. Right, Lafayette was a huge hero in our own revolution. And Lafayette was went over there, and he was kind of screwed. Uh, he fled for his life. He got arrested, ended up in an Austrian prison for a few years. And, yeah, it was not good. I mean, he was kind of uh, abandoned as well. You know, is this how you treat your friends? So I still stand by that, even though GW was talking. My, my read is still the same in terms of this character change that we see with Hamilton. This different type of response versus a man who really valued sort of friendship before and would do anything – for his friends and for his country and for his beliefs. Someone who's now sort of sitting back and taking more of a pragmatic approach and, you know, let's wait and see, isn't it? It's still a massive character change. And also we know that Hamilton is GW's right-hand man. Uh, one of Jefferson's complaints, he wrote a letter on this, didn't he? Um, was that for this meeting and this particular discussion, uh, he felt like he was just, he was served up wrong because, you know, Hamilton already planned out the talking points with GW. The decision was kind of already made before this meeting happened. So it was more so just a formality, uh, which, you know, there was a lot of friction between Jefferson and Hamilton. And, you know, Jefferson wanting to dictate policy as Secretary of State. Remember, Hamilton's Secretary of Treasury. So this should fall under the purview of the Secretary of State. And he should have more influence over the president. But the Secretary of Treasury is telling him how to handle international affairs. And GW is listening. So, of course, that's going to annoy and piss off Jefferson and just expand that gap and that rivalry between them. Bam. There we go. Uh, we got to shout out some more people real quick. Amanda M., I just found you through your first Hamilton reaction. I just adore the way you know the background history. I'm working and enjoying this so much. Hey, thank you so much. This is definitely a grind. I've been putting in a lot of work for you guys, so I really appreciate all the super chats and donations and comments and everything that you guys are giving me all right washington is on your side let's keep it going it must be nice it must be nice to have washington on your side it must be nice it must be nice to have washington on your side every action has an equal opposite reaction 
Thanks to Hamill. That's clever. Sir Isaac Newton. His third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. We talked about the Age of Enlightenment. We talked about how much Jefferson was influenced by those Age of Enlightenment thinkers. Very clever drop-in by Lynn Manuel Miranda. That's actually like a genius line. That's one of those of really thinking deep and having depth to that layer. Every action has an equal opposite reaction. Thanks to Hamilton, our cabinet's fractured into factions. Try not to crack under the stress. We're breaking down like fractions. We smack each other in the press and we don't print retractions. Ugh. I get no satisfaction witnessing his fits of passion. I mean, this is true. You know, you, you talk about the dirtiness of sort of modern politics and campaigning. And it's, it's definitely during this time and this split between this two party system that you start. Wait, no, because we're still with Washington, aren't we? Right. We have the beginning of this. Sorry. In the beginning of this schism, in the, in the beginning of this of this split. But what, what really gets me is that there was still a mud a lot of mudslinging back then. And kind of the precedent for all the mudslinging was, was set between uh, Jefferson and Hamilton. And Hamilton was a furious writer, and he would take to the press. And, and if he didn't like you, uh, you would know about it through all the writings and publications that he did. And we don't print retractions. I get no satisfaction witnessing his fits of passion. The way he primps and preens and dresses like the pits of fashion. Our poorest citizens, our farmers, live ration to ration. As Wall Street robs them blind in search of chips to cash in. And don't don't we hear this too from politicians campaigning today? You know, I, I represent you, the the working class, you know? Not the, the crooked bankers on Wall Street and the politicians who like to line their pockets. And it's, it's a promise and it's a rhetoric that has been used throughout our history. This prick is asking for someone to bring him to task. Somebody give me some dirt on his vacuous mask so we can at last unmask him. Dirt on his vacuous mask so we can at last. I love that just little sped up flow right there. One to bring him to task. Somebody give me some dirt on his vacuous mask so we can at last unmask him. I'll pull the trigger on him. Someone load the gun and cock it. While we Ooh. were all watching, he got Washington in his pocket. It must be nice. It must be nice. To have Washington on your side. It must be nice. It must be nice. To have Washington on your side Look back at the Bill of Rights Which I wrote The ink hasn't dried It must be nice It must be nice To have Washington on your side So he's doubled the size of the government Wasn't the trouble with much of our previous government side So he's doubled the size of the government Wasn't much trouble It's kind of like off to on Off to on Like more stressy, less stressy, more stressy, less stressy with a faster flow and very punchy delivery. Your side. So he's doubled the size of the government. Wasn't the trouble with much of our previous government size. Look in his eyes. See how he lies. Follow the scent of his enterprise. Centralizing national credit and making American credit competitive. If we don't stop it, we aid and abet it. I have to resign. Somebody has to stand up for the South. But somebody has to stand up to his mouth. If there's a fire you're trying to douse, you can't put it out from inside the house. I'm in the cabinet. I Who are all the different speakers? in this obviously uh we've got jefferson uh but is madison involved in this one too i want to know everyone in it in a bed i have to resign somebody has to stand up for the south but somebody has to stand up to his mouth if there's a fire you're trying to douse you can't put it out from inside the house i'm in the cabinet i am you can't put it out from inside of the house again the flow is so smooth here Madison and Listen and watching him grabbing and power and kissing him. Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents. This is the difference. This kid is out. Oh! Else you can't put it out from inside the house. I'm in the cabinet. I am complicit in watching him grabbing and power and kissing him. Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents. This is the difference. This kid is out. Washington isn't gonna listen to dissidents. Different. Oh, that punchy, multi-syllable, very condensed rhyme scheme. You know we love that around here. And power and kissing. If Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents, this is the difference. This kid is out. Oh, this immigrant isn't somebody we chose. Oh, this immigrant's keeping us all on our toes. Oh, we get a little bit rockier here. Anthem type of sound. No, no, this immigrant isn't somebody we chose. That 
that's that's kind of like a little uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony to me right there, just with the melodies, like the singing melodies, but also the faster flows right there. Very great example. Oh, if we follow the money and see where it leads. If we follow the money and see where it leads. Get in the weeds, look for the seeds of Hamilton's misdeeds. It must be nice, it must be nice. Follow the money and see where it goes. It must be nice. It must be nice. The emperor has no clothes. Ooh. Won't be in the emperor has no clothes. Hey, I love that reference. We won't be denied. Still, it must be nice. It must be nice to have Washington on your side. Ooh. And so we conspire, and so we find chinks in Mr. Hamilton's armor because we are jealous of his influence. And notice some of the critique that we talked about, you know, the Federalist Party and, and Hamilton's beliefs of a strong centralized government, financial institutions, assuming national debt, extending credit, writing bonds, you know, strengthening U.S. currency, being able to deal in international affairs with others uh, versus or other ones, which is kind of ironic if you think about it, calling them the Federalists, because when you think Federalists, that is more divided amongst the states versus a centralized authority and power, isn't it? And uh, the way Jefferson and Madison and now Burr are, you know, they, they definitely want more segregated sort of rights. And again, still very distrusting of too much power. And notice one of the major critiques that he's doubled the size of the government. Um, and they were very speculative of a large slow bur bureaucracy mr president you asked to see me i know you're busy what do you need sir sir i want to give you a word of warning sir hey quick shout out to antra s thank you so much for the super chat shout out to chat tonight love little spoilers listening to hamilton for one time knock stay strong i'm trying don't know what you heard but whatever it is jefferson started it Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. You're kidding. I need a favor. Whatever you say, sir, Jefferson will pay for this behavior. Shh. Talk less. I'll use the press. I'll write under a pseudonym. You'll see what I... Talk less. Look at that. Oh, it comes back to haunt him again. Do to him. I need you to draft an address. Yes, he resigned. You can finally speak your mind. No. He's stepping down so he can run for president. Ha. Good luck defeating you, sir. I'm stepping down, I'm not running for president. Ooh. I'm sorry, what? One last time. Relax, have a drink with me. One last time. Let's take a break tonight, and then we'll teach him how to say goodbye. To say goodbye, you and I. To talk about neutrality, sure. with Britain and France on the verge of war, is this the best time? I want time? the war against partisan fighting. What? Pick up a pen, start writing. Ooh. I want to talk about what I have learned. I mean, think about that. I want to warn against partisan fighting. Wish I could have taken uh, GW to Vegas with me. I mean, think about how divided our country is still to this day because of freaking bipartisan politics i stand by this uh you know as someone who studied a lot of politics and government and history over the years i think that we our system does not do us justice and we deserve a much more varied and multi-party system than just a bipartisan system that pits us a team a versus team b and leads to less policy actually getting done and a lot more just finger pointing anyways discussions for another day let's keep it rolling france on the Washington obviously felt the same way as me. Verge of war, is this the best I want time? I want to against partisan fighting. What? Pick up a pen, start writing. I want to talk about what I have learned. The hard-won wisdom I have earned. As far as the people are concerned, you have to serve. You could continue to serve. No. One last time, the people will hear from me. One last time. Beautiful piano melody. Time. And if we get this right, we're gonna teach them how to say goodbye. You and I. Oh. Mr. President, they will say you're weak. No, they will see we're strong. Your position is so unique. So I'll use it to move them along. Why do you have to say goodbye? If 
I say goodbye, the nation learns to move on. It outlives me when I'm gone. Wow. Like the scripture says, everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. They'll be safe in the nation we've made. This is beautiful. I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree a moment alone in the I mean that's the thing is that Washington this is a huge decision because if Washington wanted to be president again he wasn't going to be stopped he could have been president for as long honestly as he wanted to be president you know and some men really do clutch to power um and and power can be like a drug once they have it and I think it really goes to show Washington's character here. Um, when he's had power and he literally has America in the palm of his hands and he, he yearns for just a simple life um, and ultimately makes that decision on his own to, to step down. And then also he thinks about his legacy and what he wants to leave and he warns against the future and bipartisan politics splitting us all and he, he wants to leave a memorable mark on things. Old vine and fig tree a moment alone in the shade at home in this nation we've made one last time oh that's beautiful one last time. hey i didn't realize this silent chariot said washington dies two years after he'd be singing this thanks for the super chat man it's crazy <laughs> Though, in reviewing the incidents of my administration... <laughs> oh, the dark prep, that's good. To be fair, he had to put up with Hamilton and Jefferson for two terms, so there's that too. Yeah, well said. I am unconscious of intentional error. I am nevertheless too sensible of my defects not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors. I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will view them with indulgence, and that after 45 years of my life, dedicated to its service with an upright zeal the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion as, as I myself will soon be to its dimensions of rest this is Hamilton writing this, the farewell speech for Jefferson I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promised myself to realize the sweet enjoyment of partaking I mean Hamilton was a great writer in the midst of my fellow citizens the benign influence of a good laws under a free government, the ever favorite object of my heart, and the happy reward, as I trust, of our mutual care, labors and dangers. One last time. George Washington's going home. Teach him how to say goodbye. George Washington's going home. I mean, literally, one last time. Let's bring in the percussion and just let it ride one last time. Yeah, notice how uh, Hamilton was more like just rappy talking it and Washington was singing it, right? I think that's key. It's not like Hamilton was singing and Washington was singing because there's differences, right? And I think that shows Hamilton wrote the farewell address where Washington delivered it ultimately. I tell you what, I was ambitious today. We are at the three hour 20 mark. And with the farewell address by Washington, I think that that is the perfect point to wrap this one up today. It looks like I'm going to have to do round three of Hamilton because honestly, guys, I'm tired. My legs hurt. I've been standing for three straight hours and I don't feel like I'm going to give you the best me 
and the best breakdowns that I can give you if I just crank through the rest of this. I just I it wouldn't be fair to you. I don't think it'd be fair to the series and the time that we spent on this. So I think we are going to have to do a part three. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to not make you wait so long. I'm going to try to do it maybe midweek next week. How's that for you guys? I'll, I'll try to do that. Or if not, then we'll, we'll figure it out. But we'll be back with it, okay? Because I'm, uh, yeah, I'm fried. It was fun, though. This was great. You guys were great in chat. Amazing energy. Uh, thank you for everyone who super chatted today. I mean, you guys shared some really helpful information for the breakdowns. I think it was really interesting. And I think that's what I love about these lives is that it's not just me sat here trying to grab from my own knowledge base. I mean, you guys really do contribute to the dissection and the analysis and, and make it so much more enjoyable for me and just kind of the unpredictability of, of lives and, and what could happen. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. As you could tell, it's funny. You could see my energy levels just, <sighs> man, that was a ride. I, thank you. Joe Reuter, check out the Hamill drop when they did this song with Barack Obama performing GW's goodbye speech. It's incredible. I can imagine. I would love, this is, like there's a few of these performances that I earmark that I'm really interested to in seeing delivered when I watch the play. And this is definitely one of those. I mean, this is a hell of a sign off. And this is kind of why I'm ending here because I feel like this is like the perfect ending point for today. I mean, what a, what a, what a performance vocally. Ariana, this was the best. Thanks so much, Knox. Can't wait for round three. Thank you so much for the, the super chat donation. Really, thank you. I, I can't thank you guys enough for all the donations. And it, it really does go a long way. Honestly, I'm, I'm humbled by your support. I never take this opportunity that I have for granted, this this platform that I have. The the commentary, the, the love from you guys is overwhelming. Thank you. Thank you. With Without you in this, there there is no me. I also want to take a quick moment to shout out my wife who is watching my baby girls right now. And hopefully everything is well with them because this, this has been a long one. But because she makes that sacrifice on the weekends to take care of them, when it is family time, it is time when we catch up, I can be here streaming live with you. You know, shout out to her. Shout out to my brother-in-law as well for all the support that he offers and all the support that he gives behind the scenes of making these lives work shout out to my mod shout out to lkc shout out to boss lady d i saw aj in here as well you know mods and mods put in a shift mods really do put in a shift keeping things moving and taking care of stuff and the greatest thing that they give me is their time you know they don't get paid to do that they're here because they love it because they want to support so much love to the mods thank you guys you were so valued as well and shout out to you the fans for making it all come around Kiara will definitely be back for round three. This is so much fun, and thank you. Hey, thank you, Kiara. Shout out to the freestyles today and everything. Listen, if, if someone could do me a favor, one of you kind souls out there, after I end this and this gets published, please do me a favor. If someone would be willing to timestamp the different songs, I, I will pin that, and it will help everyone. Please timestamp the different songs. And when you do the timestamp, please do the freestyles as well because I think the freestyles are cool and they're important and I want those timestamped as well. And it, it'll go up on the YouTube description and everything, so it'll help. And I'll pin that. Alex Garcia, I'll be here for part three. I'm dedicated now. Much love. Thank you, Alex. I don't See, I'm so tired. I don't even remember if I just read that or not. <laughs> Thank you. Seth Patrick, hey, man, we appreciate all the work put in. Can't wait for part three. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Seth. Listen, you guys, you guys are the rock stars, man. This was a great live today. I, you know, I'm proud of this one. I enjoyed it. Dust Treader. Hey, Knox. Awesome reaction. I recommend reacting to the music of Ark Knights, a game that is music on par with that League of Legends puts out. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Gwim Money. Thank you for the direct sexy chicken donation, Gwim. Ariana has tipped. You only had four bathroom breaks. I called it. Ariana, guess what? You win. Ariana, you got me on Patreon. I mean, just wherever I, wherever is easiest for you to talk to me, Ariana, just message me and we'll hook that up. Thank you for all the love today. You win. You got the four. I'll give it to you. You've been here all day. A lot of you have been here all day. Kiara, you've been it. 
MVP as well here all day. Answer S. Thanks, Knox. Go rest. What did, what did she win? Well, I'll show you. Sign, sign Blacklist CD. Sign Blacklist CD. Blacklist and merch. The bars merch. The Blacklist merch available. KnoxHillMusic.com if you guys want to support directly. If you like those freestyles, I highly encourage you to check out my music. A lot of wordplay, a lot of doubles and triples, a lot of intricate rhyme schemes. Stuff that I point out here on this very breakdown. If you guys want to support. <laughs> Tired from running so many times in the bathroom. I think you're right. I think you're right. Oh. All right. Listen. Sign this off the way we always sign this off. Life is hard. Life will kick you when you least expect it. Listen, we, we, we all think we're strong, but you never know what's around the corner. And, and honestly, even the strongest of us can be down. Even the strongest of us can crumble if you put too much weight on someone's shoulders. So please know that no matter what you're going through, it can get better. And it will. You're never truly alone in this world. There's always someone who can empathize. There's always someone who cares. You know, help is available. Go get it. And don't be too prideful not to use it either. And, you know, I, I always say this. It's the little steps and the little things that matter. Never forget that. Family, friendship, love. Things you can't put a price tag on. Fame, social media likes, even this channel comes and goes. Don't forget the things that truly matter in life. And uh, if you're struggling, I hope you do find the strength. Set yourself little goals, little steps each day, because time can be a beautiful thing. You take a one step today, one step tomorrow. A year, two years, three years from now, you'll be amazed at how far you go and how much you can achieve. And even when you don't feel motivated, just keep going. Never give up. I love you guys. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. You know I'll be here. I'll catch you again. All right? I'm out.